right. We're, we're now live on YouTube. Okay. Thank you, Mandy. Um, who, I think we've got most people here. Um, who, Mandy, can you see who we're, who we're missing so far? Thomas Hallam and Mart, I can't see. Yes, that's correct. Uh, Henry. Is this Steele yeah. here? Yeah, she, her name is here. Councillor Mrs. Rowley as well, I can't see. Right, okay. It is now half past 10. So provided we're core eight and we have all the officers present, uh, I think we should make a start. Um, John, John, are you happy that, we, that we're core eight? Yeah. Do, yeah, do crack on. Yeah. Okay, in which case we'll, we'll start. So I now open the meeting. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this meeting of Witchhaven Planning Committee. I'm David Wilkinson, Chair of the Committee. This is a virtual meeting held in accordance with the arrangements agreed at full council on 22nd of July, 2020. The arrangements include live streaming on YouTube and a recording which will be available on the Witchhaven YouTube channel. I should perhaps explain that the reason for a 10.30 start is solely due to the length of the agenda today it's not intended to be a permanent change. Assuming, assuming the meeting is not concluded by lunchtime, I will call a break at a suitable point and adjourn the meeting with, with, a, with, a, with an eye to resuming at two o'clock. Can I start by asking the planning solicitor, John Teasdale, to carry out the attendance register, John. Councillor Adams? Yes. Councillor Bowden? Yes. Councillor Cohen? Yes. Councillor Darby? Yes. Councillor Dyke? Yes. Councillor Eyre? Yes. Councillor Haverman Mart? Councillor Miller? Yes. Councillor Rowley? Mrs. Rowley? Yes. Councillor Tony Rowley. Here. Councillor Sinton. Yes. Councillor Smith. Yes. Councillor Steele. Yes. Councillor Ward. Here. And Chair Councillor Wilkinson. Yes, here. Thank you, Chair. The only councillor we're missing at the moment is Councillor Haverman Mart. Okay. Thank you very much, John. Okay. Um, the Vice Chairman of the Committee is Councillor Mrs Elizabeth Eyre. In addition to committee members, we have the following officers. David Hammond, Head of Planning Services. Emma Worley and Nicola Robinson, Planning Managers. Joe Bounds, Urban Designer. John Teasdale, Planning Solicitor. Welcome, John, and congr congratulations on your appointment. 
Mandy Lads, Committee Administrator, Andrew Fell, Drainage Officer, and Howard Davis, County Highways. As before, I would ask members to keep their contributions concise. Please remember to mute your microphone when you're not speaking. If you wish to speak on an item, please, please raise your hand. That's your real hand. For voting, I'll ask the planning solicitor to take the vote. John Teasdale will do this by means of a named vote unless the issue is clearly contentious, such as the minutes. Public speakers and lo local ward councillors who are not committee members will be invited to join the virtual meeting to make their contribution. Statements will not be read out by officers nor circulated to planning committee members. There is an expectation that councillors and public speakers will attend the virtual meeting to explain their concerns. Local ward councillors and committee members will have the opportunity of putting questions to public speakers. Public speakers must leave the meeting once they've finished speaking and have been given the opportunity to respond to any questions which may arise from councillors. Finally, please note that item eight, Woodbury Lane, has been withdrawn from the agenda. We now move to item two, apologies for absence and notification of substitutes. Mandy. Chairman, I've not received any apologies for absence or notification of substitutes. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mandy. Um, shall we do item three, declarations of interest, Mandy? Chairman, um, I've received the following declarations. For item nine, councillors Rob Adams, Adrian Darby, Mrs Elizabeth Eyre, Tony Miller, Mrs Margaret Rowley, Tony Rowley, Mrs Francis Smith, Mrs Audrey Steele and yourself, Chairman, have declared non-pecuniary interests as the speaker, Simon Rees, who is speaking on behalf of the Parish Council, is known to them as he is a former planning officer at the Council. Thank, thank you. For, for uh, items 13 and 14, Councillor Rob Adams has declared a pecuniary interest in this item as the family are well known to him and he does business with them, so he won't take part in the discussion or the vote. And then for item 16, Councillor Rob Adams has declared a non-pecuniary interest in this item as he is an executive board member and this matter comes under his portfolio. And also for item 16, Councillor Mrs Francis Smith has declared a non-pecuniary interest as um, she is an Evesham Town Councillor. And also for item 12, sorry, um, Councillor Mrs Francis Smith wanted to declare a non-pecuniary interest as um, Peter Griffiths, who's the applicant, he's a um, district councillor. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mandy. Chairman. <laughs> Chairman, Councillor De Soto here. I declare... oh, sorry, yes, hello. I declared a pecuniary interest as I own land opposite the applicant uh, number nine that's coming up. Obviously, I did that the last time it was heard, and Councillor Tony Rowley's speaking on my behalf. That's still the case, Chairman. So I'll be okay. uh, withdrawing uh, out of that meeting. Okay. So thank you, uh, Councillor Sota. Um, shall we? Shall we just go through the the, the the general items one by one in case there are any additional declarations? Um, over and above um, the ones that Mandy has just read out. Um, could I just say that in respect of the item where Councillor Peter Griffiths is the applicant, um, it's not necessary for members to individually declare interest because the very fact that the item is on the agenda because he is a, the applicant is a, is a district councillor is in itself sufficient to cover any conflict of interest. So there's no need to declare that one. Okay, shall we just go through the items? Any additional declarations of interest on item seven, land rear of Hill House, Swineshead Lane? No. Um, item nine, which is uh, Walworth, Shine Hill Lane? No. Item 10, uh, Conference Way, Vale Park? No. Item 11, uh, British, Royal British Legion, Solwood Road? No. Item 12, mission recycling, we've, we've, uh, we've talked about. Um, item 13, Wheatlands Farm. 
Councillor Ward. Yes, thank you. I'd like to declare a non-pecuniary interest. Uh, Mr. Richard Booker is known to me on both items 13 and 14. Okay, so, thank you, Councillor Ward. Um, any more on 13? No. Okay, um, item 14, Wheatlands Farm. No. Item 15, Haywood Way Cleave Prior. No. And item 16, uh, most, the Armoury, Mr. Green. Yeah, Councillor Dyke. Thank you, Chairman. I also am a member of Eastern Town Council. And um, in the report, uh, there's some comments for the Eastern Civic Society. And I am a member, non pecuniary. Okay. Thank you. Okay, are we all, all finished on declarations? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll move to item four, the minutes. These have been previously circulated. Mandy, are there any comments, corrections on, on the minutes? I've not received any comments on the minutes, thank you. Okay, uh, in which case I will propose from the chair that we um, accept the minutes of true record. Uh, can I have a, a seconder for that, please? Uh, I think Councillor Sinton got in, just got in there first, my, <laughs> my microsecond. I'm wide uh, awake, so, with the German, yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, so that's proposed and seconded that we accept the minutes of true record. John, can I ask you to just take the vote on that, please? Councillors, can I ask for all those four? Yeah, that looks like a large majority. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so we'll now move on to item seven, which is land rear of Hill House Swineshead Lane. Uh, we have no speakers on this item. Um, so, um, Emma, I believe you're presenting this one. It is me, Chairman. Thank you. I'll just get the slides up. Okay, hopefully you can all see that on your screen. Um, this is a reserve matters application which seeks approval for appearance, landscaping, layout and scale for 96 dwellings at Swineshead Lane, Whittington. The site is phase 3A of a larger site allocated for 300 dwellings and this phase would bring the total up to 300. You can see the application site outlined in red. The site, just so we can all get our bearings, <coughs> is just um, to the east of Worcester City and to the north of, of Whittington. The site lies to the south of phases one and two of the development, which are currently under construction to the north and partly occupied. The site itself forms part of a larger allocated site, which you can see on the screen here, between the M5 and Swineshead Way to the west. The footbridge um, over Swineshead Way, which is about this point here, uh, which was required as part of the outline permission, has now been constructed and is, is op op operational. The next slide here shows the proposed site layout. You can see it within the context of the um, development to the north of phases one and two. Access is proposed from the north through the, the development that's under construction to the south of the site to where phase three is. The council are in receipt of a full application for a further phase, 3B, you can see on the layout here, um, but that, that's a separate application which isn't, isn't before you today. Phase three reflects the master plan that was submitted as part of the outline application. So it's this area to the, the south of the allocated site. And like earlier phases, the proposal includes diversions to the public right of way and bridle ways which cross the site to accommodate the development. Um, as set out on the written updates, the County Council footpath officers now have no objection to the proposal with regards to the, the provisions for the public right of way. 
The next slide shows some of the house types that are proposed on the development. They are um, mainly two storey and the proposals include a broad range of detached, semi-detached and terrace properties, um, which are, are considered to be appropriate in terms of mix and design, as well as a policy compliant affordable housing provision on the site. We've got a number of dual aspect properties on corner plots and the developments orientated to overlook the areas of public open space and the adjoining agricultural land. There is a slight correction on the report um, to page 42. It, it does set out that some of the dwellings have chimneys and, and this isn't the case um, in this phase of the development. We've got some CGI images here which show the um, the development edges, like I said, overlooking the, the areas of green space. And some photographs. This is looking from the southern boundary towards the, the parcel of land where phase 3A would be. And this is again looking from the south towards um, phases one and two, which are under construction. And this is the boundary towards the M5 and the other boundary um, towards Swineshead Way. And this is a view from the bridge looking over phase two towards the, the land there, which is, is where phase three is proposed to be. Okay, thank you, Chairman, that's all from me. Great, thank, thank you very much, Emma. Um, councillor Adams, you're the local ward councillor. Do you want to go first on this one? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Can I say straight away that this application has been on the books quite a few years, came in very late to the plan that we're working through now, and this is obviously a lot of phases to it and a lot of business. And I will say it was put in very late at the, at the plan, and I did not support it in no uncertain terms at the time about this uh, area, which I thought was a very difficult area, which was deemed to be green space all the way through from Whittington right through towards the hospital adjacent to the motorway. However, I very much moved on from those days. It's in the plan for 300 houses, and this is then going to bring it up to the 300 at this moment in time. And therefore, I don't see any reason why it shouldn't be determined today. However, there are one or two points that I think could be better that I would like the committee to uh, just bear in mind. Can I first of all um, ask Emma if she would like to make comment on the parish council's comments uh, there? Um, I'm trying to look what page it is, Emma. Yeah, I've yeah. got um, page 36 of the report sets out the um, the objection that we've had from, from Whittington Parish Council. Of course, this is a reserve matters application and the principle of development was established by the granting of the outline permission. So their comments regarding the um, uh, accessibility to local facilities um, uh, are really in relation to the outline rather than the, the matters before you today. Um, there is some concern about connectivity to the new, um, the Budgeon store. Um, but of course, that, that's now provided through the new bridge that's actually been constructed. So that would provide a safe pedestrian access to, to nearby facilities. Um, there are other comments. <clears throat> I'll relate to the, the surfacing of the bridleway. Um, that has been an issue that's come up and it's been discussed in detail with the County Council um, who are responsible for the, the surfacing of public rights away and bridleways. So, so they'll be, be dealing with that matter. They're actually happy with the proposals as put forward um, as part of this application now. Thank you. Thanks, Emma. I, I mentioned that not to make a big issue of it, but because the, the new bridge goes over onto the Kilbury Drive side. Um, that sort of thing and it is a walk through to shops there and if you get over the Stratford Road opposite the roundabout as you go into County Hall um, back you could get it over to uh, a complex of uh, shops and whatever and garage there so you know that they, they there are in that area Whittington is is a little uh, village there that it's expanded so so much 
uh, in the development plans in, in years ago, and very much split up now. There's part of it by St Peter's the Great, there's part over the dual carriageway opposite this site, and there's this site, and in years to come, obviously, uh, it is a parish that will be heavily involved uh, in the parkway development. So a lot going on there, very forward-thinking parish council. Um, just going through in the report, uh, there and I think Mrs. Steele may join with me, or I'm not encouraging her in the housing mix. I would have liked to have seen more bungalows. I must say, we're an aging population, and uh, you know, just two. I would like to have seen more. I'm not saying that's a reason for refusal. I'm not putting refusal in front of you this morning by any manner of means. But I make those comments for you to take on as, as far as the housing mix, and that uh, I, I'm quite happy with the mix of housing apart from bungalows i come back to and perhaps howard might like to make comment the parish council and supported by myself are still unhappy with this roadway that i believe could have been visited by the county council uh, in time uh, this bridal path that goes across there that when it rains it is uh, constructed that the water cannot get off it in places. And therefore it's like a slushy yellow mess. In fact, locally it's called the Yellow Brick Road and it's referred to as the Yellow Brick Road um, quite widely in that area. And what I envisage, what I'd love to see in years and years to come, and I should be long gone, perhaps I don't know, is the fact that this bridal way will be a major connection to the Parkway station in that you could lead from this bridleway as it connects in, into that part of Whittington under the motorway and go across on footpaths and join up with the motorway, which hopefully will be part of discussions uh, to do uh, with the parkway station development. And so it, it will be an important way. At the moment when it rains there, it is a slushy yellow mess which is very unfair for kids going to the school or walking that way or anybody who wants to go uh, with pushchairs and whatever to go along and have to negotiate through there. Uh, and I'm concerned and mentioned this, uh, although Highway seem to be happy with that, that it is an, a, an issue that I wouldn't want to see replate, uh, repeated for the, uh, the other constructions of the other paths. And I, I mentioned that there. And on that subject, I think looking at uh, what is suggested and what will be coming forward uh, in the future, I would like a, a letter, if you support me in this idea, to be put forward to the developers to meet us from time to time with different things that might crop up in the future. It's not what I want to set up a li liaison group. I don't think we want to go that far, but just to see things that's coming forward, like to bottom out uh, this pathway construction and further pathways and the material used. Like I think, and Howard might like to make comment, I believe we should have, a, as there's only one entrance in and out for 300 houses being proposed this morning or to, to come up to that that perhaps down into the bottom of Whittington, there should be a lock gate or something that emergency services could get in and out of if necessary. It is a large development. And I think just the one entrance uh, to be used in and out, I believe could be better. And there, I don't know whether Howard lo would like to make a comment on that, that that could be further discussions with the applicants. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Before, before we go any further, Emma, could you just confirm that those issues that Councillor Adams has raised are in fact part of the reserve matters, um, so we, we can discuss them, or are they matters that have already been settled at the outline stage? Um, certainly the, the issue of, of having a single point of access um, was established as part of the outline. Um, and with regards to the surfacing of the, of the bridal way, like I said, that's been a matter that we have discussed with the county council. They've been out and visited the site when um, we'd had some rain in response to the comments that had come in regarding the surfacing. And they are they were happy with the, the surfacing that had been put down. So it, it is within their jurisdiction if there is an issue with the, the surfacing. Um, and it's not, not really for consideration today as part of this reserve matters application. I think, was it okay. just points? 
Shall I get him? Would you? The two points, the access and the surfacing of the... Yeah. Okay. Um, Councillor Adams, you've, you've heard that response. Um, uh, Mr Chairman, I mentioned those because of my suggestion that they could meet with perhaps the parish chairman and myself as time goes on. Um, I think because... Uh, Emma said there will be another application following that. It would be, uh, I think it's fair that I make those comments looking forward for the future application, which will be outside the number that was agreed in the plan of 300. I'm not opposed to that application coming forward in any manner or means. All I'm saying is if we could have a meeting from time to time to discuss local issues, because the parish council have got very despondent in the comments they have made uh, to the applicant. So I'm trying to look okay. forward, I'm trying to be helpful, but I would like an answer that looking forward, whether Howard considers that one entrance in and out in the future will be enough. All right. Okay. Um, Howard, do you want to respond to that? Um, yes, Chairman. Happy, happy to do so. Uh, just check in. Am I unmuted? Can you can you hear me? Yeah, yes. we can okay, hear you. Thank you. you. Um, yeah. I wasn't clear on the instruction on the top of the screen. Um, Emma, Emma is correct. In in this case, um, the uh, the outline application has determined a single point of access. Um, in this location. Um, interestingly, the County Council doesn't, in its um, streetscape design guide, have a limit to the number of dwellings that can be served off a single point of access. Um, but officers have been in the habit of considering um, the, uh, the, the need of, of a second point of access where the numbers exceed 250. Now, in the context of the outline officers long before me, um, clearly decided that, that this site would um, overall be limited um, and up to 300 would, would be uh, acceptable. So that was the position at the time. And as you've been advised, this um, this application currently sits within that that limit. Um, the uh, when when further applications come forward here, then we'll clearly have to consider them um, at that time. Um, and have to look at what what means may be available to to achieve um, a second point of access, be, be that either just purely for emergency vehicles uh, or for general traffic. Um, I, I haven't considered that in, in, in this case because it is within the current application lies within the within the limit of, of the outline. Um, in terms of just just a comment about. Um, the bridal way, the public rights of way officer, as Emma has said, has responded um, positively without uh, an objection. Um, the thing to note in relation to, to, to the public rights of way is that the standards applied to those rather than highway are slightly different. Um, and the standard of finish, et cetera, um, we might consider that to be lower then would not be normal for, for a highway. It has to be appropriate for um, ridden horse and people on foot um, and not for vehicular traffic. Um, so it does sometimes mean that there is a slight difference between the public rights of way um, opinion because it's run by different legislation to the highway legislation. I hope that's helpful. Okay, thank you very much, Howard. Uh, Councillor Adams, do you have any further comments to make? No, no I, I don't want to be, uh, you, you know, trying to put a, a, a spanner in the work, so to speak, of you determine this application favourably this morning. Not by any manner means. I'm trying to look forward and trying to be helpful and trying to represent the people of Whittington and Roundabout. And I, I still think that it's not too much to ask that we support a meeting of interested parties from time to time looking forward, which may help uh, understanding of what might come forward on this site in time to come. I think we've done it on, on other sites, and I think yeah, uh, I'm sure we can do that. the public yeah. rights of way people perhaps could meet 
me down there when there has been rain just to to bottom out that one part of that path yeah i'm, I'm sure we're, i'm sure we can add a, yeah, uh, a just, note to any position uh, to that effect i'd, uh, I'd be very added. grateful for that yeah. thank you mr chairman uh, thank you uh, councillor tony roller you uh, i think you indicated to speak yes thank you chairman um i i, I agree with what rob is saying um I can't see any harm in an informative note going along with if we were minded to uh, uh, agree uh, approval for the reserve matter application today. I can't see any harm in a, in a side letter informative note going to the developer uh, with a heads up regarding a potentially informal get together with the appropriate agencies to discuss issues such as the uh, yeah, in, in terms of the future phases for consideration, as um, Howard says, for a potential secondary emergency access, approve, uh, you know, uh, uh, improving the surface of, of, of the bridleway, which, as Rob has said, could become an active travel link to the um, to part way, which which is something we should be promoting. And if we can do that through this development, then then, then we should. And, and indeed, the other point that he made about bungalows, what's, what's wrong in saying that uh, at future phases, the, the, the committee would, would, would be looking for um, a few more uh, bungalows um, a, 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 as part of the choice of housing type. I can't see the problem with an informative note, Chairman, and, and I, I, I will move uh, approval uh, in, in, in accordance with the officer's recommendation here, but with the addition of an informative note to cover those points I just discussed, um, I'll, I'll move approval. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Ali. Can, can I just confirm, Emma, that uh, we are able to um, to produce such a, a suitable note to the developer along the lines that Councillors Councillor Adams and Councillor Rowley have just suggested. Absolutely, Chairman. I think that would be be reasonable for us to to add an informative to to mention those points. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I've got Councillor Mrs. Air and Councillor Mrs. Steele. Councillor um, Mrs. Air, I, I think you. Were... I, I was supporting uh, Councillor Adams and uh, Councillor Rowley on uh, moving this to uh, um, a vote uh, and. Uh, uh, I, I agree 100%. I think it's very helpful to have um, a note like this that uh, is more than just desirable. I think this sort of a communication at this point saves a lot of expense and changing things in the future. Okay, thank you. Councillor Mrs. Thank you, Councillor Mrs. Steele. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'd like to. If Mrs. Eyre hasn't seconded, I'd like to second this proposal mm -hmm. and add that I totally agree about uh, informative notes. I don't think this need be the only application that we perhaps go along this route. And also the fact that we need more bungalows. You won't be surprised to hear me say that, but no, we do. No, not, not at all. We do, I, bet, yeah. I bet you there'll be sold before the houses are. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Steele. Uh, Councillor Mrs. Smith, and then I think we'll move to a vote. Thank you, Chairman. Um, could I just ask Emma, please, on page 37 of your report, uh, under local flood authority, it refers to Worcester County Council's current policy of not adopt adopting SUDs. And there's a suggestion there that adequate private arrangements should be put in place with a suggestion that that be part of the conditions. I don't actually see mention of that in the conditions. Is there some reason for that? Emma, can you help us with that? Yes, sure, through you, Chairman. Um, the drainage of the site isn't actually a reserved matter. It's something that was considered at the outline stage. And there is a condition on the outline permission, condition 13, um, that says no works or development shall take place until a SUDS management plan, including details of future management responsibilities, is submitted and approved. So we're happy that's all been covered by the, the condition on the outline permission. Thank, 
Thank you, Emma. OK, I think we should move to the vote now. Uh, it's been proposed and seconded for approval as per officer's recommendation uh, with the uh, addition of an informative note uh, along the lines that, um, was this, that has been suggested. Um, so can I ask John, uh, can you take the vote on that, please? Thank you, Chair. Good morning again, councillors. Um, I'll read out your names in alphabetical order, and if you could let me know whether you're for, against or abstaining, I'd be very grateful. Councillor Adams? For. Councillor Bowden? For. Councillor Cohen? For. Councillor Darby? For. Councillor Dyke? For. Councillor Eyre? For. Councillor Haverman Mart? Um, I'm going to abstain as I was um, joined halfway through, I'm afraid. Councillor Miller? For. Councillor Rowley? Mrs. Rowley? For. Councillor Tony Rowley? For. Councillor Sinton? For. Councillor Smith? For. Councillor Steele? For. Councillor Ward? For. And Chair Councillor Wilkinson? For. To confirm the vote, Chair, that's 14 votes for, zero against, and one abstention. So the motion has been carried. Okay, thank, thank you very much, John. Okay, um, now item eight has been withdrawn from the agenda. So we now move to item nine, which is uh, Walworth, Shiny Lane, South Littleton. Um, we have some speakers on this item. Um, so we'll just wait for our speakers to, um, to appear. Um, Chair, if I may, can I um, just declare that I live on Shine Hill Lane? Um, I think I'm 24 doors down from this development. I have Yeah, you're, you're muted, uh, Thomas. I can't, we can't hear. I'd... Sorry, can you hear me now? I can hear you now, yeah. Can I just declare that I live on Shine Hill Lane? Um, a non-pecuniary interest, but I live, I think, 24 doors down from Woolworths. Okay, uh, thank you, okay. um, uh, Thomas. Uh, I'll just wait for Mandy to just make a, a note of that. Okay, are you? You've got the Mandy, good. Okay. Um, right, we have some speakers. Uh, we have from the Parish Council... Uh, Simon, Simon Rees. So Simon, I believe you're representing the Parish Council today. Um, through Chair, the, uh, Victoria will be speaking uh, and using the three minutes. I'm here just to assist if need be. Oh, OK. I can't see Victoria Sevier at the moment. She's on the second page from, from what I can from see. This. Yeah, she's there. Oh, Chair. yes. Yes, I can see. Yes. Vic yes, Victoria. Yes, I thank you, see. Chairman. <laughs> yeah, OK, jolly good. Um, and also, uh, I can see Deb Debbie Farrington. Yes, I think. Uh, yeah, OK. Um, well, uh, so we. I think that's our... That's all the speakers, you're all here. So if you haven't been to uh, one of these meetings before, then what will happen is the... Um, the uh, case officer will present the item. Uh, you will then have three minutes each. That's three minutes per, per, per group, objector or supporter or parish council, a total of three minutes each uh, to, to make your points. Uh, you may be asked questions uh, by committee members uh, and you will then be asked to withdraw from the meeting whilst the uh, debate takes place. So, uh, OK. Um, so... Uh, Nicola, I believe if you're presenting this one. I am, yeah. I'll just share my screen so I can do the presentation with you all.
Right, hopefully you can all see that okay. So we have yeah. an application um, which is for the erection of 24 affordable dwellings and associated earthworks to facilitate surface water drainage, landscaping, car parking and other ancillary works at Walworth, Shine Hill Lane, South Littleton. Members will be in receipt of a written update which includes comments from the housing officer and additional neighbour comment, uh, suggested further condition and offers a commentary on alternative locations for the development in the village. In addition to that, South Littleton Parish Council submitted yesterday a four page letter of objection, um, which was received following the publication of the written updates. This has been summarized by the case officer as follows. The application site measures 0.83 hectares, proposes 24 dwellings and is a major development. A further development for 25 houses under reference 1802688 has also been approved on land 200 metres from the application site. These schemes cannot be considered small scale rural exception sites under SWDP 16. The development would be out of scale with the village and fail to reflect policy guidance. Two previous permissions, 1802688 and 1902441, provide 36 new affordable dwellings in the Littletons and deliver virtually all of the identified need by the most recent Homes Choice Plus data and South Littleton Needs Survey. The application proposes 12 more properties than identified as needed in South Littleton and the mix fails to reflect the latest housing needs evidence. The Littletons have three allocations in the emerging SWDP review and if built would deliver a further 18 affordable homes. Adjoining parishes have also been allocated sites which could deliver up to 52 affordable dwellings if built. There's insufficient evidence to demonstrate that, that there is proven and as yet unmet need for this rural exception site contrary to SWDP 16. So those are the comments from the Parish Council that were received yesterday, and I'll now start my presentation. So here we have the site location plan shown the site edged in red. The site contains one dwelling, Walworth, which is set back from Shinehill Lane in South Littleton, a Category 2 settlement. The host dwelling occupies the front part of the site, and the remainder of the site falls outside the development boundary for South Littleton. This plan shows the line of the settlement boundary, which runs close to the rear elevations of the dwellings on Shine Hill Lane. Here we have an aerial photograph showing the site in the context of the surrounding properties and fields. This application was referred to committee in December 2020 and members voted to defer to allow for reconsideration of the design and examination of housing mix. This slide shows the previous site layout as was presented to members in December. And this slide shows the proposed site plan as amended following the committee deferral. We can see that the development of the site frontage remains similar, but that the opportunities have been taken to reposition the dwellings to the left of the access road and to completely change the alignment of plots nine to 14, which are those properties in the center of the site to address the highway and the number of proposed units at the northernmost part of the site. The council's urban designer has been closely involved in the amendments to the site layout. The corner plots are designed with windows facing the front and side where they face the proposed road and would achieve active frontages. Here we have the revised landscaping proposals plan submitted to reflect the revised layout, but it's largely the same with tree planting proposed along the east side of the proposed road and the retention of the existing group of trees along the east and rear boundaries. The proposed street scene joins. Now I'll talk you through each of these. The top image, image A, is how the development will look when viewed from Shine Hill Lane, with three dwellings sitting to the right and two dwellings to the left of the proposed access. And all three dwellings set, ba all dwellings set back from the site frontage and an area of open space to the front of the site. The second image, image B, shows us the dwellings which will run to the west of the access road. Here we can see that these properties are dual fronted to achieve active frontages to the highway, parking areas and site frontage. The third image, image C, shows us the two bungalows in the northeastern corner of the site, which are adjacent to the dual fronted property with plot four lying in the background, also dual fronted. The fourth image, D, shows us the view of the internal access road looking east. Properties will now face this access 
And this is where the plans have been altered significantly from the original proposal. Here, a row of two-storey semi-detached dwellings of red brick and render in varying designs are proposed. Amendments sought since the committee deferral include the introduction of chimneys to some dwellings, arched brick lintels, more pitch roof canopy porches, and dormer features to two plots, resulting in more variation in design across the development. Here we can see the plans for plots two, which will sit to the left of the access at the site frontage. We can see a dual fronted dwelling, which will address the new internal access road as well as Shine Hill Lane. A two storey build building of mixed red brick and render is proposed. Here we have plots five and six, which are the bungalow sited to the northeast corner of the site. And here we have some plans for plots 13 and 14, which form one of the pairs of the semi-detached properties which are facing the internal access road. Again, we can see the use of red brick with porch and dormer detailing in keeping with the character of the local area. I run through a few site photographs for you. Here we have the view of the access from Shine Hill Lane. The existing dwellings along the north of Shine Hill Lane looking west. The view from within the site looking towards Shine Hill Lane. And the view from within the site looking north. The recommendation is one of approval subject to the completion of the 106 agreement. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Nicola. Okay, um, so representatives of South Littleton Parish Council. Um, Victoria Sevier, I, I think uh, you, you were going to speak on this item? Yes, please, Chairman. Okay, are you are you having the whole three minutes, or are you sharing it with Simon, or are uh, you having the whole three minutes yourself? I'm having the yeah. three minutes, thank you. Okay, all right, okay, over to you. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak on this application. South Littleton Parish Council fully supports delivering a small local affordable housing where there's an identified need. However, this application represents a major development in the village, which is only 200 metres away from the previously approved major affordable housing scheme for 25 houses in 2018. Planning permission was also granted for a major development of a site in Middle Littleton for 21 affordable homes in 2019. The Littletons are clearly contributing significantly to the delivery of affordable housing in the, this part of the district. Your housing officer has updated their comments based on the latest Home Choice Plus data and South Littleton Housing Needs Survey, which took place in January 2021. This concludes that there is an outstanding need for 12 affordable properties. This need is significantly smaller than the application in front of you today, which is 50% of the total number proposed. The mix of the properties proposed for the application would also fail to meet the identified need for our council's housing officer. The need identified is eight one bedroom properties, two two bedroom units and two three bedroom properties. This application delivers six one bedroom flats, two two bedroom bung bungalows and a combined total of 16 two and three bedroom homes. Therefore, as it stands, the proposal represents an over delivery of affordable homes with an in inappropriate mix. We would also like to highlight that the current review of SWDP, which is due for adoption in early 2023, has provisionally allocated 48 homes for Middle, Little, Middle and South Littleton. These allocations based upon a 40% of site provision can deliver 18 affordable homes. The adjoining parishes of Pebworth, Cleve Prior, Brett Forton, Honeybourne and Offenham have also been provisionally allocated a combined total of 129 residential units. These allocations would also deliver up to 52 affordable homes if built. These adjoining parishes have also been subject to a number of recent planning permissions which will deliver a significant number of affordable homes. In conclusion, the Parish Council contends that there is insufficient evidence to demonstrate that there is a proven and as yet unmet local need for this rural exception site as proposed. The mix proposed also fails to reflect what limited need there is. The scheme therefore fails to accord with policy SWDP 16. We respectfully, respectfully request that the committee refuse this application. Thank you very much, uh, Victoria. Um, Okay, De uh, Debbie Farrington, you now have three minutes. Thank you, Chair. Members will recall that the determination of this application was deferred at Planning Committee on the 10th of December 
to allow further improvements to be made to the proposed layout of the site and appearance of the dwellings. In addition to this, members wanted confirmation that the need for affordable housing in the village could still be evidenced in light of the recently published housing needs survey. The housing needs survey was carried out by Witchhaven District Council during September and October 2020. It identified 19 households who indicated a preference for an affordable housing tenure within the next five years. On the back of new information provided by the survey, further meetings were held between the council's housing officer and the, and the applicant. It was agreed that the revised proposal, which still proposes 24 affordable homes, consisting of six one-bedroom flats, two two-bedroom bungalows, eight two-bedroom houses and eight three-bedroom houses will contribute towards meeting the local needs identified and is fully supported by your housing officers. Once having established that support is maintained by officers to the principle of an affordable housing scheme in South Littleton, the applicant further engaged with your urban design officer. The amended layout repositions the proposed dwellings on plots 9 to 14 so that they run, they, so that they front onto the internal road to provide a more active and attractive street with larger rear gardens. Alterations to the elevations of the dwellings have also been made to include chimneys, arched brick lintels, pitched roof canopy porches and some dormer features. This provides greater variation in the appearance of the development. Your urban designer officer fully supports these amendments and appreciates the effort made by the applicant to significantly improve the proposals. She is satisfied that the arrangement is now to its optimum. As house prices and private rents continue to rise, we are facing a growing homelessness problem and child poverty through overcrowded and efficient housing. Families are having to cut back on essentials to prioritise rent. Providing quality and fair affordable housing is an absolute must and through plans such as your current housing strategy, it is clear we share the same commitment. Good quality, affordable housing is a hallmark to good health and mental well-being. In addition to these main two issues, and to briefly recap, I would like to remind committee that your officers raise no objections to the proposals in terms of density, green infrastructure, landscaping or highway safety. In summary, there are no outstanding technical or environmental objections from statutory consultees. We have worked hard with your officers to address concerns raised by committee in December and hope that members will now endorse the officer's recommendation to approve the proposals subject to the completion of a Section 106 legal agreement as set out within the report. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Abby. Um, before we go any further, Man Mandy, could you just confirm, I believe this is the item that Councillor Soto said he was going to, not going to participate in, is that correct? <clears throat> Yes, it was, Chairman. OK. Um, councillor Soto being, of course, the local ward councillor. Um, so if, if he's not present, I, must, I, I will then ask, are there any, does any member of the committee wish to put any questions, this is questions only at this stage, questions to any of the speakers? Councillor Miller. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman. Yes. Um, Debbie um, uh, referred to quality of housing um, a, a few times in, in the um, briefing that we just had. And the one thing that I am finding as, as local member is a complaint from the residents that move into uh, the new dwellings that if they're not watching the same channel as their neighbour on their television, um, it's very disturbing because they can hear what the neighbour's television is saying. Um, one uh, lady, a, a aging lady, with her hearing aid, um, was complaining and, and going for refitting all the time because she got an echo. The echo was that when she was watching BBC News at a louder volume, next door neighbour was watching it, there is a slight time delay between the two televisions causing an echo. Now, if this is a factor that you can actually hear what your neighbours saying and what the television is saying, then obviously we are not um, asking our developers to uh, give adequate sound um, insulation between properties. And where these properties are, uh, one, two bedroom properties, they're not detached. Um, it does cause a problem. Um, I've had some residents that are requesting a move. Can you please comment on the 
acoustic insulation in the houses that you are going to be providing? Um, um, Debbie I, I, Farrington, I think, I think that's aimed at you. Is that aimed at me? Yeah, yeah. Um, all I would say is that um, I would think that the, the, the level of insulation within these houses would, would be governed by building regulations that obviously set the bar in terms of insulation between properties. And I, I would imagine that, you know, that they, they would have to ensure compliance with, with the relevant standards to, to ensure that that type of problem doesn't doesn't occur. Okay. So that, that, that would be outside the planning, the planning, you know, the, the, the planning regime and, and dealt with by building regulations. Could I come back on that one, please, Chairman? Um, no, if it's a supplementary question, yes. It, it is indeed, yes. Um, with the building regulations and with the inspection of regulations, I know on the um, Shire's estate, which is uh, by me, um, in fact, uh, the builders uh, forgot to put insulation where it should be. Um, that was not checked by the inspector who inspected the building quality. Um, and it, it, it's having an assurance that we are building something which is built to a livable standards. And I'm getting more concerned that building regs, even though you say that they're, um, they're built to regulations, I don't think regulations are quite enough, but I would like assurance that whomever, because I don't think you'll be choosing the local authorities um, planning inspector to inspect these, you'll probably have a private contractor um, and the frequency may not be as it would have been if it had been the local authority inspector. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. Is, is that actually a question, Councillor Miller? I'm not quite sure what the question is in all Yes, that. the question is, um, who will be inspecting the quality of these builds? Will it be the local authority inspector or would it be a private um, contractor who would be um, tasked for inspection? Uh, De Debbie, if you want to briefly come back, I'm, I'm not sure that's actually a planning issue, to be strictly correct. But nevertheless, if you if you can quickly comment, then yeah, I mean, so. I, 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 honestly, I, I don't know. But whether it be the local authority, or whether it be a, a private, you know, um, build, building surveyor, building inspector, they would have to conform to national standards. And the, 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 the applicant, you know, has, has got experience in building houses and knows knows what what to do, who, who to go to. Chairs, if, if I could just interject that, I'm not entirely sure that this is something that we can control within the, 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 the planning regime, so I believe we have to, to, to move on. Thank you. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, are there any further questions from the speakers? Yes, Councillor Cohen, is this a question? Hmm. Yes, it is, Chair, but Councillor Eyre was in front. Oh, that's very generous of you. May I go forward to David? Um, sorry, is this, a, are we, is this a question? Question, yes, for Victoria. Yes, all right, yes, okay, okay. if there's a question. I think her first okay. name is Victoria. I'm trying to get my head around some of these numbers. I think she said there were 45 affordable houses within 200 metres that had just gone through. And... Uh, there were 18 planned in the SWDP, but of course that comes after this. So, you know, that has to be taken in account of whatever happens now. Um, and there are 52 locally, but the housing need didn't, the housing need is talking about the South Littletons. The housing need is not talking about the other areas. So if there's 19 needed and 24 um, are being provided, uh, I'm not sure we can take into account the 52 and the 18. So I just wanted uh, to, to ask her again if I've understood what she said. Firstly, um, yes, sir, thank you, Chairman. Uh, firstly, uh, just to clarify the figures. So there were 25 uh, properties that uh, are 200 metres away, not 45. Okay. Um, and uh, the housing, the South Littleton Housing Needs Survey identified a need for 12 houses. But the, the, but the recent one said 19. Um, I don't I have a record of 19. Chairman, okay. can I assist at all in, in terms of the, um, the figures? Yes, please. Yeah, so basically the, the latest housing officer comments that have been received in this application have identified a total of 12 affordable houses in South Litterton, and that takes into account 
the home choice data, as well as the latest housing needs survey. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Cohen, you had a question? Yes, I had a question. I wondered if Debbie could um, tell us about the target EPC rating, because I've read the energy report and the, this development is using gas boilers, which are going to chuck out lots of carbon. So um, I don't know whether she can tell us what the target EPC will be. Debbie? I don't know the, the, the actual rating, um, but we did um, include an energy statement with our submission that sets out the proposed energy efficient measures that the application will, um, the proposals will, will, will include. Um, that, that includes the use of low NOx, NOx boilers, um, some, UP, some PVC solar panels, um, energy light saving um so, so so your light bulbs are going to be low energy there's a whole range of measures put in place to ensure that we're, we're sort of um reduce the amount of energy consumption of, of the property and similarly that the houses will be insulated to ensure that energy ratings are achieved um and i think there's a there's a, a condition also recommended on any approval that would, would require further details to be submitted as well to ensure that you know we are hitting the targets required by your council's policy Okay, thank you. Okay, if there are no more questions, um, uh, sorry, Councillor Tony Roll, is that a question? Or? Uh, no, no uh, oh. Chairman, it, it will be just to represent Councillor Lesotho, if I, if I oh. may. Uh, okay, yeah, for, fine. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that in a moment. Uh, in which case, I think we'll ask the, thank you uh, for attending uh, all the speakers. Uh, we'll ask you to withdraw from and participation in the meeting. Obviously, you can still watch it on uh, on YouTube. Um, okay, um, I'm going to open it for debate. Before I do that, we need to bear in mind this item has been looked at once by committee, and it was deferred for some very specific reasons. So we're not in the in the business of going about to reassess whether there's a better site up the road and so on and so forth. We've got to assess the issues, that, the applications in front of us. And Nicola, could you very briefly remind us of exactly what it was deferred, the reasons it was deferred, which are basically the, the issues that we need to come back to today? Yeah, absolutely, Chairman. So it was deferred to, to have a look at the, at the design and the layout of the, of the dwellings. There was some concern that the design quality wasn't, wasn't sufficient. And it was also deferred to re-examine the, um, the, the housing needs data just to ensure that the dwelling mix proposed met the identified local housing need. Those were the two issues that the previous item was deferred. Okay. Okay, thank you. So that, that's basically what, what we ought to confine our discussion to. So on that basis, and I'll then start with uh, Councillor Tony Rowley. Uh, uh, as you say, you're, you're representing Councillor Lesota on this one. So, uh, Yes, Tony, Chairman, Tony. I, I, I fully agree with what you just said in terms of the reasons for deferment. Um, it's really just to explain the situation and why I was going to represent uh, Councillor Lesota. He, he did it, it declare... Uh, a, a, an interest in that he owned land nearby and quite rightly decided to step aside. It's on the background at the time that the parish council were in, um, I'll put it politely, in a little bit of turmoil at the time and had nobody to represent themselves at the committee in uh, December 2020. And Councillor Lesota, being unable to do that at committee, did ask me whether I would represent him at that committee. Uh, and, and I agreed uh, that, that, that I would. And obviously he, he's taken that as being uh, extended into this meeting. I'm really just explaining myself, Chairman, as to, to my role in that respect. Um, it was because of the concerns that there was nobody to represent the parish council and indeed the people of, 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 of South Littleton. So, Hence that, 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 that I was going to speak on his, his behalf. And his concerns were those very issues that actually you've just explained that the reason it was deferred, and that was about the housing mix and, and the need. So um, it, it just really explaining myself as, as to what I was going to do at that committee. And, and that role seems to have been extended into this committee. So I think at that, Chairman, I, I'll... I'll uh, I'll shut up because I, I think the 
parish council today did themselves um, uh, perform well and I thought Victoria spoke very well and they had Simon Rees here to help them as well. So I feel at the moment that the residents uh, and indeed Thomas is, is, is about as well, but I, I believe the residents have had a good say today. So I, at that point, Chairman, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll shut up. Okay, so, thank you very much, Councillor Rowley. Does anybody else wish to speak on this item? Yes, Councillor Darby. Yeah, you inviting me? Yes, you can just carry on now, do yeah. yeah. uh, Yes, I must say, uh, I was impressed by the parish council's uh, evidence. It does seem to me that the, uh, the 19 houses uh, become 12. Uh, that is clear from the officer's update. Uh, the, the written update that we had uh, sent to us. Uh, and it showed that that 12 uh, were very largely one bed. Uh, eight out of the 12 uh, were one bed properties. And that uh, what we're being offered here is only six one bed properties. Uh, so uh, that the 24 houses that are being asked for uh, don't fully accommodate the 12 that uh, are, seem to be needed. Uh, they only accommodate, uh, well, uh, they accommodate 10 of those. Uh, so I don't, I think that the Parish Council's case is well made and I, I don't see that our housing officers can really defend uh, the argument for uh, this rural exception site um, as we uh, as per the figures uh, that we've been given here uh, by the latest officers update so I think I'm prepared to propose refusal on the grounds that there isn't a need uh, the case made by the parish council okay. thank you councillor Darby uh, councillor Margaret Rowley Yes, so I'm prepared to second that. I, I really am not convinced by these numbers at all. It does, seems to be the wrong housing mix and uh, too many in total. So for th those reasons, the lack of need, demonst demonstrated need, uh, I uh, support the proposal for refusal. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Haidman March, did you have your hand up? Hello, can you can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Yes, Chair. Um, just to, to reinforce the thing, I was also I welcome the addition of some tree lined uh, streets, but I also felt that w one of the reasons we sent it back was to have another look at the design of the houses, and I feel they're still not up to the standard that we should be asking for Witchhaven and um, Southleton. The developments that are to the the north, no, to the west of the proposed site, I believe have a much a better design than this. Um, so I was a little disappointed that they came back. I, I, I'm appreciative that they did add some tree lined streets, and I know that's one of the things we're looking for. But I felt that they could have done some extra work in the design of the houses as well. So um, that was the only thing I wanted to comment. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, does anybody else wish to speak on this item? Okay, well, it's so yes, Councillor Tony Rowley, if you wanted to come back. Yes, I want to speak uh, on, on my own behalf now. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I think where um, there has been improvement is actually on the design, despite what Thomas says. I, I, I think our urban design team have done a good job here, and it's a much better. Uh, proposal than the one that came to us in December 2020 and and so from from that point of view I, I, I would propose that uh, we uh, move for approval in accordance with the officer's recommendation I think it was subject to a section 106 as well so I, I would move the officer recommendation to approve okay thank you um, yeah, can I just jump in there for a second? Apology, Chair, for, for you. Can we just confirm uh, again, Councillor 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 Rowley and Darby, um, our reasons for, for refusal for my for my notes, please? Yeah, Councillor Darby, could you just articulate uh, your reasons for refusal? 
Uh, well, they're essentially the reasons put forward by the parish council that uh, to meet, uh, I'm not sure the policy numbers, uh, 16 is the rural reception sites, uh, that uh, affordable housing, uh, um, the principle, if you, if you look on page 89, uh, the tests that have to be met uh, under this policy is there is a proven and unmet local need, having regard to the latest uh, strategic housing market assent assessment. Uh, and um, it seems to me that that case has not been made, that the uh, isn't a need for 24 houses. Uh, there is a need for some houses, but not 24. Uh, and that therefore there is over provision. Uh, so policy SWDP 16 has not been met essentially okay. on the grounds that the mix is, the number is too large. Yeah, okay. and I, I was happy to second that person for refusal. Okay, thank you. Chairman, okay, thank you. Can I just clarify something before we move the debate forward? Is that okay? Just in uh, yes, carry on, Nicola. Yes, 16. yes. Sixteen. I think it's important that members know, and this is set out in page ninety of your officer's report, that that really what we're talking about is is that local need, which in the context local need is defined as being meeting the needs of the parish and the adjoining parish and the adjoining parishes. Now you've got in your written update comments from the housing officer which are supportive of the application of the mix that has been put forward and the mix that has been amended which has incorporated a greater number of one bedroom properties in line with that recent survey data i would be very cautious in voting to uh, in refusing an application for not meeting the identified local need and being contrary to swdp 16 when that need for the adjoining parishes does also need to be taken into account. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nicola. Um, Councillor, I can see Councillor Adams before that. Councillor Dyke, did I see you had your hand up earlier on? No? No, no. Okay, Councillor Adams. Well, uh, only to say, I, I, I think it's come back to us and I think we've covered the matters adequately. Uh, and therefore, when you have taken the vote in for refusal, and if that fails, I should be seconding Councillor Rowley for approval. Okay, thank you. Um, right, so um, the position, and uh, John, correct me if I'm wrong, the position is we've got that we must take the votes in the order that they were, that the uh, motions were proposed and seconded. So we had a proposal for refusal um, on, by Councillor, put forward by Councillor Darby and seconded by Councillor Mrs. Rowley. Uh, and we've got a motion for approval, uh, which was put forward by Councillor Tony Rowley, and um, which will potentially be supported by Councillor Adams when we get, uh, assuming we get to that point. So on that basis, I think we're going to have to take the a vote on the proposal for refusal, first of all. So That's correct, Chair. John, John, can I ask you to take, um, uh, take the vote on the proposal for refusal? Thank you, Chair. Um, as we were before, councillors, I'll read out your name in alphabetical order. And if you could let me know if you're for, against or abstain, I'd be grateful. Councillor Adams? Against. Councillor Bowden? Against. Councillor Cohen? For refusal. Councillor Darby? For refusal. Councillor Dyke? Against refusal. Councillor Eyre? Against refusal, but I do think officers could give us clearer information about adjoining parishes in the future. That would have helped. Thank you, Councillor Rare. Councillor Haverman Mart? For. Councillor Miller? Abstain. I wasn't convinced with the explanation of the agent. Councillor Mrs. Rowley? For refusal. Councillor Tony Rowley? Against. Councillor Sinton? Against. Councillor Smith. Oh. Councillor Steele. Or oh, refusal. Councillor Ward. 
Against. And Chair Councillor Wilkinson. Against refusal. Give me a second, Chair. Yeah, to confirm the votes, that's six votes for, eight against, and one abstention. So that motion has been lost, and, and we're now open to a further, further motion. Okay, thank you. In that case, uh, we'll move to the vote for approval. Can I just, it's been uh, proposed by Councillor Tony Rowley. Um, can I just confirm, Councillor Adams, you said that you would be prepared to second this one, assuming we got to this point. We're now at this point. Are you prepared to second uh, approval? I am, Chairman. Yeah, thank you. Uh, in which case, uh, we'll take the vote for approval. Uh, John, can I ask you to take the vote, please? Thank you, Chair. Uh, once again, Councillors. Councillor Adams? Four. Councillor Bowden? Four. Councillor Cohen? Against. Councillor Darby? Against. Councillor Dyke? Four. Councillor Eyre? Four. Councillor Haverman Mart? Against. Councillor Miller? <laughs> Abstention. Councillor Mrs. Rowley? Against. Councillor Tony Rowley? Four. Councillor Sinton? Four. Councillor Smith? Against. Councillor Steele? Against. Councillor Ward? Four. And Chair Councillor Wilkinson? Four. I'll just confirm the numbers, Chair. To confirm, Chair, that's eight votes for six against and one abstention, so the motion has been carried. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so we'll now move to item 10, uh, which is uh, Land at Conference Way, Vale Park, Evesham. Uh, we have one speaker on this item. Uh, so we'll wait for well, it's Mr. Julian Meredith. So we'll wait for Mr. Meredith to appear. Good morning. Ah, Mr. Oh, Meredith, yes, good morning. Good morning, good morning Mr. Meredith. Welcome. Um, we, uh, can I just confirm whether there have been any additional councillors present? Um, there's a number of, the, this, this application covers a number of wards. Um, so partly Council Mrs. Ayers Ward, uh, partly Councillor Robinson, uh, Nigel Robinson, but I don't see him here. Um, Councillor... I'm speaking for Councillor Robinson. Okay, fine. Uh, and then um, the ward that was covered by George Mackison uh, is now covered by Councillor Tony Rowley and Councillor Mrs Eyre. Um, it's also part of Councillor Cohen's ward. So Councillor Cohen obviously is here. Councillor Julie Tucker also um, is involved. But again, I don't think she's going to be here unless Councillor Cohen tells us otherwise. No, I was just no. speaking on behalf of both of us. No. Okay. In which case, um, we have... Uh, yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, so, Mr. Meredith, um, welcome. Uh, I don't know if you've been to, if you've seen what one of these virtual meetings before, uh, but if not, uh, what will happen is the, the case officer will um, put the put the uh, put the case forward. Uh, you'll have three minutes to speak. You may be asked some questions, uh, and then you'll be asked to withdraw uh, while the committee debates it. Okay. So, uh, Nicola, I think this is yours again, isn't it? It is. That's right. Up 
Hopefully you can all see that okay. So here we have the application for an outline application with access and landscaping for B2 general industrial, B8 storage and distribution at Conference Way. Members, you're in receipt of a written update which contains comments of the tree officer and the natural heritage officer. The case officers also commented on these tree officer comments within the written update and set out amendments to the recommended conditions. Um, I'd, I'd also provide a verbal update on that. The tree officer has advised that we haven't yet got full tree survey details of the trees on the Porter's plantation boundary. It's considered that there may be just one area where there might be conflict between the existing trees and the proposed outline layout, which can be resolved at the reserve matters stage. I'll now proceed with the presentation. Here we have the application site location plan. We can see the site edged in red and the remainder of the land in the applicant's control in blue. The site comprises former agricultural land to the south of Vale Park, Evesham. And we can see Enterprise Way running to the north. The site is 14.2 hectares in size. You have an aerial photograph of the site and its relationship with Vale Park to the north. We can note that Battleton Brook runs along the western site boundary. The site gently rises from the northwest to the southeast corner. A belt of vegetation runs diagonally through the site and is covered by a TPO. And that's this line here. Enterprise Way and Conference Way to the north house predominantly large scale industrial and warehouse units. To the south is agricultural land and the Porter's Plantation. Part of the site forms part of the SWDP 5013 Vale Industrial Park allocation. This is shown in fold in purple on this plan. We can note that it covers part of the eastern and southern parts of the site. This allocation includes approximately 34 hectares of employment land. The remaining parts of the site are outside the allocation, i.e. the western and northern parts of the site, and these would fall in the open countryside. The application is for B2, which is general industrial, and B8, which is storage and distribution uses, with access and landscaping the only matters for consideration at this stage. An indicative master plan has been provided showing how the site could be developed. Access to the site would be from Conference Way to the north, and the development will sit, will sit immediately to the south of phase one. Approval of landscaping is sought and landscaping proposals plan has been provided the impl implementation of which would be conditioned, noting the inclusion of landscaping buffers to all sides of between seven and 10 metres in depth, and an attenuation basin in the northwest corner of the site, around which an amenity pathway is proposed. We have the illustrative landscape section showing the proposed landscaping in the context of the indicative buildings proposed. The members will note that these heights of buildings are indicative only. Looking at some site photographs, here we have the view of the existing site access within the existing estate. And then looking into the site from the end of the existing estate road. Looking along the northern boundary towards the east of the site. And the view looking northeast. From the track within the site looking north, picking up the existing industrial buildings in the background. Looking eastwards along the side of Porter's Plantation and the view towards the northern site boundary. Here we have the view south from the southern boundary looking northwest and the northwest along the TPO line. And here we have the view looking westwards. The recommendation, um, as, as set out in your committee report, is to delegate approval subject to the receipt of satisfactory comments from the tree officer. These have, these have now been received. The tree officer has, um, is confident that any issues can be addressed um, as part of a reserve matters application. So the recommendation is now one of approval. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Nicola. Okay, Mr. Meredith, you have three minutes. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Julian Meredith, Director of Chase Commercial Limited and the applicant for the outline application that's before you today. And as such, I'm speaking in favor of it. Uh, my professional team and I have worked closely in conjunction with both your planning officers and all statutory consultees uh, to bring forward this exciting employment generating development site at Vale Park Evesham. The outline scheme before you today has been designed to provide a variety of units to attract new businesses into Witchhaven district 
as well as providing expansion or relocation opportunities for, uh, uh, to retain existing ones. Upon receipt of an outline uh, consent applications for reserve matters will come forward to meet any specific requirements of individual occupiers. Uh, marketing undertaken to date has created strong levels of interest with discussions already ongoing with three separate companies. Uh, Chase Commercial um, uh, is also involved in phase one of development at Vale Park, which was consented in 2019, and where we are currently on site constructing 10 small units targeted at SMEs, which is due to reach practical completion in May this year. We are also finalising terms for a new 30,000 square foot turnkey facility for a business moving into the district, indicating the level of demand for employment generating land at present. Funding is being finalised for the initial uh, package of enabling works to include the construction of the roads, balancing ponds and services to provide plateaued development sites. The last 12 months have significantly changed many aspects of life, uh, including planning committees via Zoom, which is a, a new one for me. And the employment land before you today at Vale Park is, I believe, going to be critical for the future vitality and productivity of Evesham as a thriving market town. I therefore hope that the committee will support the outline proposal before it today. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Meredith. Um, okay, let's start. Councillor Mrs. Eyre, do you have any questions for Mr. Meredith? I do, I do. Okay. Um, yeah. Mr. Meredith, my, I'm speaking on behalf of myself and uh, uh, my colleague who is for one particular ward and I'm helping out in another particular ward. So the co comments apply to all of these uh, wards. Uh, we're, we're, all, we're very supportive of economic development uh, and uh, employment in this way. But the questions I have, which could be dealt with in reserve matters, are uh, you're in the setting of an, a an AOMB. In fact, it's now called a national landscape. And, uh, oh, I must declare an interest, John. I am a member of the National Landscape Board. Uh, which in legislation is, some, is still referred to until new legislation comes forward as an AOMB board. Um, but uh, we're very um, concerned, even in the setting of the impact on dark skies. Uh, so we're just asking if in reserve matters, we're going to ask for a note, but we're just asking you to tell me of something about the lighting on the site uh, at this point. Mr. Meredith. Uh, uh, th thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Um, uh, in, in terms of the lighting, are you referring to the e external lighting? Are yes, you referring yes, to? Sorry, not, yes. Not, not, so anything that would impact dark skies. Yes, well, as you rightly say, the external lighting um, will be part of reserve matters. Um, and, and that is something which we will have to address at the time. We will obviously look to to, to work in conjunction um, you know, with, with the regulations and the fact that it is in um, it, its location and its setting. Um, you know, but at the same time, we must obviously, because it is employment generating, we must take into account the fact that it, it, these things have to be sufficient in order to be able to operate um, correctly. Yeah. I mean, lighting, lighting has, has moved on and continues to move on at, at great pace. So I, I'm sure that certainly we will look to uh, work with your, uh, your planning team again to ensure that that is, uh, we come up with the correct solution for that. Uh, I'll leave any other comments okay. for when I, I get to speak later. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Tony Rowley, do you have any questions for Mr. Murders? Uh, thank you, Chairman. No, uh, other than to thank him for coming along and, and all the other speakers today yeah. uh, at this virtual meeting, which he's recognised as a very strange way to meet. Yeah. And I, I long yeah. for the day when we're back in the chamber, we can meet face to face. That's yeah. my only comment. Thank you. Um, but could I say, I, I also long to, uh, for barbers to open, so my apologies for my rather dishevelled appearance this morning. <laughs> okay. Um, Councillor Cohen, um, you're the, the other uh, ward councillor present. Do you have any questions for Mr Meredith? No, I don't. No. Okay, good. Um, can I ask any other committee members? Does any other committee member have any questions for Mr Meredith? No? Okay. All right, well, in that case, thank you very much, Mr. Meredith. I uh, will ask you to withdraw at that point while the committee uh, debate the matter. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, um, so let's we'll go back. I'll go back in the same order that, we, that we've just been, which is Council Mrs. Eyre again. Do you want any comments to make? Uh, yes. Um, my colleague and I 
support, particularly economic development and employment on sites such as this, rather than on the outskirts of villages where there's a lot of uh, damage done with HGV and shipments, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so we are very supportive of this application. Uh, we, we would just ask that a notice put on the file that we, we really do want to see uh, the border of plant, uh, Porter's Plantation uh, and proper landscaping. And we really do want, uh, in reserved matters, downlighting, which is industrial downlighting is very common nowadays. LED industrial downlighting, which fully meets health and safety and is fully suitable for this sort of environment. Uh, there are schematics which I'm constantly sharing with uh, companies um, for uh, those in the setting or in an AOMB without any detriment or additional cost to the uh, uh, companies uh, in question. So I'm sure our officers will follow up on that. But I just ask a note is put on the file and uh, uh, at the right time, I'm happy to propose this application. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, Councillor Tony Rowley, do you have any com further comments to add? Uh, yes, thank, thank, thank you, Chairman. I'm happy to second, uh, to second the recommendation, the officer's recommendation. And um, I, I, I find this, this Application is, is is good for employment. It's good for Evesham, and it's one that we should support. Thank you, Chairman. Okay. Thank you very much, Chair. Councillor Cohen. Do you wish to add any comments? Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. I would like to make some comments. Um, the application is for a development of forty acres. I'm old-fashioned. I'm still in acres, which is equivalent to twenty-three football pitches. Well, it will be another forty acres of green fields concreted over lost permanently for food production and as a carbon sink and uh, there's a consequential loss of habitat for birds, small mammals, reptiles and invertebrates. However, the other side of the argument, which uh, my, our colleagues have um, voiced, is that it will give more local employment opportunities for Evesham residents, which should reduce the distance they have to travel for work, thus reducing their carbon emissions. Um, so on balance, I'm for the development. However, I'd like to see a number of areas of the plans improved. Um, firstly, I have a concern that the development could worsen downstream flooding around Bastleton Brook, which already suffers from significant uh, downstream flooding at times of high rainfall. Um, and these seem to be happening more often. So I'd like to ask the drainage engineer um, some questions and then I'd like to be able to come back and make a few more comments if that's all right David. Uh, yes certainly. Um, uh, Andrew do you wish to respond well, to I've, that? I've got, I've got three questions for Andrew. Um, in order to reduce the possibility of the development worsening downstream flooding around Battleton Brook at times of high rainfall and to achieve betterment as suggested during the consultation is it reasonable to ask the developer to eva evaluate the installation of a tier one suds deep drainage system? So that's question one. Question two, is the proposed sud scheme with a peak outflow rate of 40 litres per second from the attenuation pond at times of high rainfall an enhancement compared to the runoff from the undeveloped fields? And finally, are conditions six and seven sufficient to ensure that the development not only does not worsen downstream flooding around Baffles and Brook at times of high rainfall, but uh, delivers the betterment, reducing the peak flow. Hey, Andrew, do you want to respond to that, please? OK, no pressure there, then. <laughs> right, a bit of background first before I answer those questions. Um, Battleton Brook is a main river up to the point of the bypass, sorry, from the bypass going downstream. From the bypass up to this, it's classed as an ordinary watercourse. As you quite rightly said, there's been issues um, with drainage and flooding along Battleton Brook. <clears throat> and we in the engineering section, never mind to do with the planning, we in the engineering section have been in discussions with a number of. Um, businesses downstream of this and we've been assisting with improving flows along Battleton Brook 
And the issues that we had were things like uh, the culverts underneath some of the, the road crossings um, had restrictions in them, and that was causing localised flooding to nearby, proper, uh, nearby businesses. So we've, we've improved the flow. We were also aware of the fact that um, this top end of Vale Park is solid clay. So I'm probably going to come to the, one of the answers to your questions. So the Greenfield runoff rate, which is what we all work to for solid clay is pretty horrendous. Um, in other words, there is pretty much nothing in the way that's going to infiltrate into the ground at that point. So if you were to work out the Greenfield runoff rate, we work on an average of five litres a second per hectare. That's going to give you a rough starter for the discharge that currently goes into Battleton Brook at that point. You can do some better calculations on that to get a more accurate figure. And that's where we will be looking for betterment because we know, again, forget the planning side from our own engineering side that we're trying to improve the flows going through Battleton Brook and therefore stop flooding downstream. So with that local knowledge that uh, your officers have in the engineering section, we will be looking to improve those flows. Now, we will also be looking to see um, where these buildings and how these buildings will discharge to the pond. Um, like I said, this, the chances of infiltration is pretty much nil. So we're going to be looking to attenuate and restrict the flow as much as possible. There are ways of doing that which don't include pipes. Um, so you're looking at things like swales and filter strips. Um, there is the opportunity to include things like little dams to slow the flow down, but that will all come out in the detail on whatever conditions. Now, forgive me, I don't know what condition six and seven is at the moment. I don't have that to hand. But if it says something along the lines of the developer must show restrictions to X, Y and Z, then yes, they will be strong enough for us to go back and say that we want betterment or further details or more sustainable drainage methods if that fits in with the environment of which they're trying to drain. Now, I appreciate you've got some pretty sizable buildings here um, and the developer will probably want to maximise his space in getting those buildings up. So whether there's any more uh, leeway in asking for greener, more sustainable means of drainage, that will only come out through the conditions. I hope that answers your questions. Okay, yes, um, thank you. Right, um, so David, if I can, uh, Chairman, if I can come back. Um, as the council own the development land, we have some influence over the quality of the finished development. It surely makes sense to use this influence to ensure that the development supports the carbon reduction target and actions of the Intelligently Green Plan, as well as making it into an exemplar that can be used to show that yet again, we're a forward leading council. Um, along with the, um, the betterment mitigation of surface water runoff from Battles and Brook, which we've discussed, there are six other areas that I suggest could be enhanced to improve the development, to make it fit for more extreme weather conditions, more intense rainfall, hotter temperatures, longer dry periods that will are, are occurring and will occur more in the mid 21st century that this building is designed for. So there's biodiversity loss Currently, seven mature trees, which have TPOs, and a group of aspens will be cut down to facilitate the development. These all have potential for bird nesting. Uh, trees are being planted in to compensate, but these will take some years to grow to usable heights. And that's all that's being proposed to be installed in the short term to mitigate that is three bird boxes. Can I suggest this should be a high number? Um, then there's habitat loss, 40 acres of open field have been lost and yet there's no proposal for green roofs, whereas applications at Worcester 6 that we've looked at included some green roofs. Then the buffer zone, the landscape officer recommended 15 metre buffer zones, but currently the buffers are between 7 and 10. Uh, increasing them to the recommended 15 would be much more effective in creating an ecoton corridor for nocturnal wildflower life and would answer some of the points that uh, Councillor Eyre is making um, about um, nighttime glow. Uh, then there's energy. I'm very pleased that um, 
there's an uplift in PV panel installation above the SWCP27 to give 20% of regulated energy. Um, along with the proposal to have air source heat pumps on two of the office units. However, if the um, if there were units um, air source the heat pump units on all the offices, then this would make it an outstanding development. Um, so, um, and I also think that we also be looking for a high construction standard, and um, we the, the one I would suggest is Brem Excellent uh, Energy Efficient Standard, which is a policy that I believe will be in the emerging SWDPR. So it would make a bit development outstanding. So, um, and then there's water use. There's quite a bit in the um, sustainability uh, statement about water use, but there's nothing about rainwater harvesting. And these are big buildings. There'll be a lot of water coming off them. And if you do rainwater harvesting, you can use it for flushing the toilets, uh, which again will significantly reduce water usage. So to address these concerns, I propose for the consideration by the committee that um, they, they be um, put forward uh, for delegation to the head of planning to discuss um, and obtain further investigations to, um, to, to look at them. And, the, and the, the ones I'm proposing that should go forward are um, biodiversity gain, habitat loss, buffer zone width, building energy efficiency, and rainwater harvesting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Scott. Uh, Nicola, um, can you, uh, is there a process by which we can, um, on the one hand, approve this recommendation, uh, this, this proposal, but equally take account of the items that Councillor Cohen has suggested? There is, however, I would suggest that, and that many of the uh, issues that Councillor Curran has cited will be dealt with in the, in the course of the reserve matters application and aren't actually for consideration at this stage. You know, the, the, mm. the construction standard, the, the incorporation of air source, heat pumps, the rainwater harvesting. And then with regards to, to biodiversity loss and the buffer zones, you've got an application which is supported by, by our landscape officer. Um, so I, I, I really would question the need for further discussions on that point when it's supported by a statutory consultee. And then with regards to bird nesting, obviously that, that's dealt with by separate legislation in terms of when works can be carried out to trees and certain times of the year when birds may be nesting in them. So that there is obviously the capacity for the recommendation to be amended so that these items can be discussed. However, I, I would question the, the need to, to do so at this stage. Yeah. Pres presume that there's no harm in um, adding, adding a sort of a, what might call a shopping list that Councillor Cohen has um, uh, suggested. And if, if it turns out the answer to some of them is, well, that's already covered or whatever, or as a legislation, then, then so be it. But I don't think there's any harm in, in adding them. But I don't know. Can I ask Councillor Mrs. Yeah, you're the proposer. Are you yeah, prepared I, I, to accommodate? I, I would welcome. I, I think there's no harm in making a shopping list. As it's a good way of putting it. Nobody's asking the the, 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 the to be changed, but just a shopping list to go back uh, with the the approval, so that people consider consider all the things that to Councillor Cohen has mentioned, plus my dark skies. And I can share with. I'm very happy to share. A, a number of industries have taken from me already uh, the dark skies information and to prove more uh, less expensive for them. So I'm happy to share that with them. I think the officers have all that information anyway, and I know we're on top of the landscape, but you know, just, just okay. remind landscape, dark skies and all the other things, just a little shopping list would be very helpful and they can be picked okay. up from the minutes. I don't think we need to go further. No, thank you. Uh, and Councillor Tony Rowley, you're the second of the, the motion. Again, are you happy for, the, for us to um, caveat any, uh, an approval with, with yeah, this? Uh, yeah, yeah I, I'm ha happy to cover the issues with an informative note. I think it's helpful as a guide from the committee to the developer, so I'm happy with that. Okay, good. Now I've got two more speakers before we move to a vote. I've got Councillor Mrs Steele and I've got Councillor Darby. So Mrs Steele. 
Thank you, Chairman. Um, can, can we add solar panels to the shopping list, please? I don't see any, any mention of them anywhere, and I think it's a, okay. an ideal area on that roof for solar panels. Okay, yeah, I don't see a problem with that. Councillor Darby, you wanted to speak before we go to a vote? You, you, we can't hear you, Adrian. Sorry about that. Um, I, I've argued in the past, and I think it is coming forward in the uh, r review, uh, that uh, the uh, colours of roofs uh, should be taken into account when seen from the AONB, uh, both the Malden Hills one and the Cotswolds one. Uh, I, I know that they're no longer called that. Uh, and uh, I, I think that that should also be added to the informative note. It's not only that this will be that we, we need to preserve dark skies, but uh, we need to shield as much as possible this development, which is a very large one, from the edge of the AONB. And roof colour is an important determinant of that. Uh, and indeed, if we can get green roofs, uh, that is a, a, a very good way of doing it. I remember the rules at Keynes Foods, which are a, a great success from a lot of points of view. So uh, I would just like that added to the shopping list, please. Okay. Okay. Um, right. uh, okay. A quick uh, comeback, come back. I, didn't, I didn't mention it because normally for buildings like this, our officers are very good at the glare test uh, in the reserve matter. So I, I think... I hope that would be picked up there. But if, yeah, but if, if not, it, it can be, I'm sure it can be added. Okay, good. Well, I think we I'm getting the feel that we've got a sort of a consensus sort of way, way forward on this. So I think, uh, let, let, shall we try and ca capture it while we're, while we're still ahead, as they say? So, uh, John, can I ask you to move to a vote, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, again, Councillors, I'll read out your names in alphabetical order. Councillor Adams? Four. Councillor Bowden. Four. Councillor Cohen. Four. Councillor Darby. Four. Councillor Dyke. Four. Councillor Eyre. Four. Councillor Haverman Mart. Four. Councillor Miller. Four. Councillor Mrs. Rowley. Councillor Mrs. Rowley. All right. I'll get on mute. Four. I have to wave my thing. Councillor Tony Rowley. Four. Four. Councillor Sinton. Four. Oh, Councillor Smith. Four. Councillor Steele. Four. Councillor Ward. Four. And Chair Councillor Wilkinson. Yeah. Four. The vote was unanimous, Chair. The motion's been carried. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, shall we try and do one more before we before we adjourn? Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, we'll go to item eleven, uh, which is Royal British Legion, Salwood Road, Droitwich Spa. We have one speaker, Mr. Rob Wall. So we'll just wait for Mr. Wall to uh, to appear. Hello, can you all hear me? Yes, we can, yes. Well, hello, Mr. Wall. Welcome. Hello. Right, okay. Um, Mr. Wall, I don't know if you've been watching the proceedings so far, in which case you'll have picked up the way it, you'll picked up the way it works. So you, you don't probably don't need me to explain it again. No. Yeah. Okay. I've been I've been watching in, so you've just, been watching. Just okay, so yeah. Sorry, yeah. just before I start, can I confirm that my webcam is working because I've had a few issues with it working? Yeah, yeah well, I mean, we can we can see you. Yeah. To the extent we need to put it that way. Yeah, that's okay. uh, that's fine. Yeah, good. Um, okay. Um, right. So I think Emma, you're presenting this one. So uh, over Sorry, to you, Mr. Emma. Chairman. Can I interrupt? Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Um, Sorry. Yes. 
Yeah, is Councillor John Hartley actually here? I, I've been in contact with him. He's on a train. Has he got actually got here? I haven't, can't see him, no. In that case, uh, I, I've got what he wants to say, so I'm more than happy to represent okay. him uh, when it comes okay. to that stage. So, okay, thank you. Okay, okay, thanks, Alex. Okay, Emma, over to you. Thank you, Chairman. The slides up here. Okay, so this is an outline application for 22 residential units on land at Solwalk Road in Droitwich. The site's currently occupied by the redundant Royal British Legion building, which has been empty since about 2016. The application includes access, which is proposed from Solwalk Road, you can see within the red line here, um, to the southeast corner of the site, which would replace the existing shared access to the northern point, uh, which is currently shared with the, the depot to the north. The aerial photograph here shows the site context. You've got the residential development to the um, west, the guide and scout um, headquarters to the south and the oil depot to the north with the railway running along the, the eastern boundary. The site lies immediately to the north of um, a site which is allocated in the SWDP for an indicative number of 20 dwellings. You can see from the extract here from the SWDP. So as I mentioned, it is an outline application with all matters reserved apart from access. Um, the applicant has submitted this indicative layout which shows how the development may be accommodated on the site. So you can see the, um, the access there, the areas of proposed car parking, um, how the development may be laid out. We've got bin storage, cycle storage and, and shared amenity space. Um, the suggestion is that it would be 22 one and two bed apartments over a three um, or four storey block. Um, does, the design and layout would obviously need to take into account um, potential um, impact of the depot to the north and also the railway um, running along the side boundary too. Um, members would note from the report that the application was accompanied by a viability assessment, which has been considered by the valuation office on behalf of the council. The report demonstrated that a policy compliance scheme, including um, affordable housing and financial contributions towards infrastructure, wouldn't be viable. Um, and this justifies approval without the usual contributions being sought. So the recommendation is one of approval subject to a legal agreement to secure a, a review mechanism to reconsider the viability if the scheme isn't delivered in a timely manner and the situation regarding the viability may change. I'll just go through the rest of my photographs so you can see the existing building there. Um, this is Solwalk Road in the foreground, the car park, the railway line to the east slightly elevated um, and another view of the site frontage from Solwalk Road and the existing shared access that would be closed and a different access provided. So that's all from me. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Emma. Okay, Mr. Wall, you have three minutes. Oh, sorry, I should say Councillor John Hartley has now, has now appeared here as well. Welcome, Councillor Hartley. Um, okay, Mr. Wall, you have three minutes. Thank you. Um, yeah, good afternoon, members, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rob Wall. I'm from RCA Regeneration, and I'm here to represent our client, the Royal British Legion. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to speak on behalf of our client's application. I do not wish to reiterate the case officer's comprehensive and thorough report, but would just like to draw members' attention to the following aspects. Throughout the determination period, we've worked closely with the case officer to agree the principle of development on this site through recommendation of approval for this outline application. The council's position will be protected in future because it ensures that the section 106 agreement includes a clause allowing for a review mechanism of the viability report if the residential units are not all completed or sold within three years of the viability report, as Emma has just stated. 
During the course of the application, both RCA and our clients have worked closely with the Worcestershire County Council Highways Authority to agree an access that is safe and suitable for both pedestrians and users of the highway. Um, clearly, as the scheme is seeking approval of the principle of development on this site, it should also be acknowledged that any future scheme on the site can be scrutinised by both officers and members through the Reserve Matters application. Um, the Royal British Legion, however, feel that it is important to sell the site as soon as possible to a developer in order to realise some funds from their asset, which will then be reinvested into their charitable work, which provides vital support to former service personnel and their families. Once again, thank you very much for providing the opportunity to address committee members in respect of our client's application. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you very much, Mr. Wall. Um, okay, Councillor John Hartley, well, welcome to Planning Committee. Uh, firstly, do you have any questions to put to Mr. Wall? Um, thank you, Chair. Um, no, I don't. Okay. Uh, does any other committee member have any questions to put? Yes, Councillor Tony Rowley. Yes, Tony. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Mr. Mr. Wall, um, obviously the Royal British Legion are associated with this site. Is it intended that any of the accommodation uh, will go to veteran service people? Um, is, is that the intention or is it uh, an open, uh, if for the open market? Um, to, to my knowledge, I believe that it is for the open market. However, the points noted and that's certainly something that I can discuss with my client. Okay, thank you. Uh, any further, no further questions from for Mr. Wall. Um, in that case, uh, Mr. Wall, thank you for your contribution. Uh, we ask you to withdraw at that point. Um, and can Well, Adam has had his hand up, Chairman. Oh, did, yeah. sorry. Rob, Adam Rob did. Did, did you have a hand up, Rob? Well, well I, I, I did, and it was exactly the same question as just been asked, asked by Councillor uh, Rowley. And we've done uh, okay. this before. We did it at Norton Barracks, and I, I was hoping that a certain part of this site could be used uh, to have a direct connection to veterans. Okay. So Thank you, Councillor Adams. Okay. Um, right. So, Councillor Hartley, do you, do you want to speak to the committee? Thank you, Chair, and um, hello to members of the committee. So just a few comments on behalf of residents. So the background to this is that I raised, raised it informally um, at a couple of residents meetings last January and February prior to any lockdown, um, just to gauge feedback. It wasn't comprehensive at all. I'm talking maybe a handful of residents. Um, and so I'm just going to raise some, some of their points. So firstly, you know, we do need this affordable housing. Um, in the town, we've got residents who are stuck, you know, in large three, four bedroom houses, and they really would like to downsize, but unfortunately there's nothing for them in the town. Um, so on the face of it, you know, we really do need this type of housing. Um, and I think another point that was raised was it would improve the aesthetics of the area. You know, I've grown up in the town and it's, that road has been really scruffy for the last two decades. Um, it desperately needs tidying up and we've seen with the pipe works further up the road, you know, it looks tremendously tidier. Um, so, you know, um, that was seemed to be a positive that it would tidy up the area. And I think proximity to town centre and the station as well is a real positive. And of course, it's within, you know, easy walking distance of Berry Hill. You've got Lidl, Aldi, other shops. So, on the, so those were points, I, I guess, that were raised in favour. Um, a few other points were said. I think the, the main concern was the lack of consultation with the neighbouring properties. I'm um, talking about those on Ledwich Road and the surround, surrounding roads. And I think they do feel a bit disenfranchised, maybe. Um, and I would suggest that a public meeting, you know, in the interest of democratic engagement would have been helpful. Um, and perhaps, you know, um, there, there could still be scope for a public meeting. Um, the fire risk has been raised, you know, it's next door to a fuel storage site. And, you know, one resident said, you know, it's possibly the most dangerous place to put, you know, um, 22 homes on top of a fuel storage site. Um, and then another point was the, the Southwark Road itself. 
and that was that you know it's an incredibly fast road i think arguably it's the fastest road within the town i know motorists regularly clock 50 miles an hour and it's sort of like a grand prix style straight um you know it's an arterial route through the town and you know cars do really get up to speed on there unfortunately so that would be seem to be sort of a hazard risk and then the access as well i mean although it's right next to the station because of the way it's located it's out on a limb on that cell walk road and so residents would have to sort of navigate the verge you know um, and it would be slippery in winter and really a lot would have to be done in terms of joining it linking it up so those points were raised um, i think parking as well on the site was was seen it was really minimal parking in terms of turning areas and getting all those cars on and the question was asked you know at peak times at rush hours you know how's that really going to work you know cars queuing to get in and out because a car's turning around in the car park um, due to that, I guess, the lack of turning radius in the outline plan. And um, I think some residents possibly were concerned that, you know, the, the people of the town have given to this, you know, the Legion for 40, 50 years. And so, you know, it not, doesn't necessarily sit right that it's just, you know, disappears altogether and it's not replaced with anything at all for the community. Um, and then finally, I'll end with this point. I suppose this was, um, this has been raised by other local members, Detroit Rich members, and that is that the question of the Baxington site redevelopment as a whole, um, that's very much seen as, I guess, the, you know, the magic bullet, which is gonna really transform the town centre. Um, and I know the town centre prospectuses are coming forward in May this year. And so I suppose the feeling was that a fragmented, I guess, piecemeal approach, a scattergun approach where little bits are done, um, you know, without a cohesive strategy in mind, um, is could potentially be compromising the project as a whole and it might be seen to be jumping the gun. Um, so here I've just aimed to provide some of the feedback I've had from residents as well as other members of the town and I hope this is helpful to the committee. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank, thank you very much, Councillor Harty. Uh, Councillor Sinton. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I must say I do take on board quite a lot of the things that uh, Councillor uh, Hartley has said there, uh, particularly about the Salwalk Road being like a Grand Prix track. Uh, just to show, I mean, I walked up it yesterday and realised how fast the car's going. Uh, when we tried to put a, a VAS machine there, it ran out of battery so quickly it was useless. Uh, and that is something I would like to bring up with the uh, transport people in a minute. Um, also, you will have seen some of you the update from uh, Councillor Richard Norris, which is, was on our updates yesterday, who has got reservations about this. Um, and it's amazing, the road, because people tend to completely ignore, don't actually know it's a 30 mile hour limit, I don't think in many occasions. And I, I'm also very pleased about the, but the, there is a transport statement within the application, and it actually deals with the lack of pavements on that side of the road. And I think that's absolutely superb. Uh, I also note the proposed development is next to a fuel depot, and I really would like some reassurance that the proximity of this, this causes no health or safety risk to the potential residents. Um, I also accept the possibility that John mentions that this part of drug is becoming piecemeal, the development of this part becoming piecemeal, which is something we really want to avoid. We've had a problem with this on the other side of drug, which we don't want it on this side as well. However, balanced against this is the fact, that, as we're often reminded at this committee, that we have to look at the application before us. The British Legion premises has been empty for a long time. And if members had had the opportunity for a side visit, they would have seen how unsightly and dilapidated the building and grounds have become. Uh, Emma, Emma, your photographs were too good. You make it look better than it is. <laughs> I was there yesterday. It looks horrible at the moment. Um, so it, it could also be argued on that basis that we should be grateful to the developer to, uh, to come forward to try to improve the visual impact of the site. And if we refuse this application, I wonder how long the site will be left to deteriorate even further before a plan for the whole of this part of Droit, which comes to fruition. In addition, as you said in the report, the sale of the land would give the Royal British Legion the opportunity to continue the charitable work we all value so very highly. The officer's report is very comprehensive and the conditions address many of the concerns I and others share. And before I, I am minded to propose acceptance of this, but I would really like, first of all, to raise the issue of the traffic along Sal Warp Road with uh, Mr. Davis, Howard Davis, if you could 
and talk about it for a minute to us and see if there's anything we can do to alleviate this problem. We're going to have extra cars there through this development and other developments are already going on down there. I just wondered if there's any county policy on this at the moment. Thanks. Thank, hey, thank you, you Councillor Sinton. Um, Howard, do you wish to respond or not, please? Uh, sorry, have you have you got me now? Um, yeah, yeah, I've got you. Now. Thank yeah. you. Sorry, I, I'd lost the mute mute button. Um, uh, yes, the um, uh, as Councillor Sinton said, the um, applicant has submitted um, a, a fairly thorough traffic uh, assessment um, with the with the application. Um, there was quite an amount of uh, discussion between uh, the highway authority and the transport consultant um, after preparing that and they've made some amendments which we very much um, welcome. Um, the, the interesting um, point that I pick up from members concerned is the speed of vehicles on the road and certainly looking at the photographs, um, I would anticipate the speeds um, would, would be higher than desirable. Um, on on that road, um, just from its just from its alignment. Um, interestingly, the speed survey um, was done over a seven day period in December um, of last year. Um, obviously, within um, the sort of COVID affected period, what we have found generally is speed surveys that have been undertaken under the COVID conditions, because traffic has been much lighter, um, have uh, been therefore slightly higher than they, than they have been in former times. And in fact, the particular speed that we are always concerned about, which is the speed below which 85% of traffic travels, um, is is actually recorded as 40 miles an hour in one direction and so just just over 37 in the other which given visually what i see in the photographs and what what members have said um find slightly surprising um but what we found is it's much easier to do the surveys accurately with fewer vehicles traveling the road because the key thing is that those vehicles are traveling um, in free flow conditions, not being held up by people uh, in front of them. So I find that a little strange. That said, um, the visibility requirements can be achieved for speeds which are higher than that. There is sufficient uh, verge to achieve uh, appropriate visibility standards for higher speeds than that. Um, but I was slightly surprised at that. Um, it would certainly um, be wise for us to check uh, the signing um, of the speed limits in that area to ensure that they are up to appropriate standard. And I will make a note um, of, of that um, to the relevant offices um, following following this uh, committee. Um, the other point that um, uh, Councillor Sinton mentioned um, was that the proposals now, not, not when submitted, but now um, include a footway um, on the uh, southeastern side of the road, the railway line side of the road, um, from the point of site access all the way down the verge to a connection with the right of way, which is just be just adjacent to the, the junction with Ledwich Road, um, but on the opposing side to it. And that allows pedestrian connection to uh, key facilities. Um, in terms of parking, um, I believe that the parking provision is in accordance with standard for uh, dwellings, the number of dwellings proposed. Hopefully that is, uh, is helpful. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Howard. Okay, Councillor Sinton, are you, uh, you've heard what Howard said. Are you, did you actually say you were prepared to 
propose um, approval of this one? Just one more query with Emma. There was much said about the possibility of the dangers of the, being next to the fuel depot. It's something that, that Councillor Hartley raised. Um, what is the feeling about that? The possible health and safety risk of being so close to the fuel depot. Um, Emma, can you? Uh... Thank you, Chairman. Um, it's not something that's really come up um, as part of the um, consideration of the planning application. WRS have commented with regards to noise and disturbance from the activity at the oil depot, and obviously there's the, the railway line as well. Uh, and potentially older, I guess, from the oil depot. Um, it would actually be covered, health and safety would be covered by different legislation, um, potentially building regulations or, or separate legislation that, that we wouldn't be considering as part of the planning application. Okay. Thank okay. you very much in that case, Mr Chairman. Yes, I, I do move that we uh, accept this uh, application with the conditions put forward by the uh, Officer, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I have Councillor Rob Adams, followed by Councillor Tony Rowley. Rob. Yeah, just a bit of a legal point here, um, in that I've got this right now. I'm looking on page 17, uh, um, the, the remarks from Councillor Morris, and the fact there may be a Droitwich Railway Station master plan. Well, a lot of things might happen in the future or might not. So I'm really dismissing that comment a little bit because it might happen in the future and I don't think that's a consideration. Can I have a little bit of clarification and if what weight I should put on that, if any? I uh, don't know whether John um, or Emma wants to comment. Well, I, I think I think Councillor Morris is, is making the point that if at some future date the, the um, access to Droitwood Station was to be completely moved over from where it is at the moment to uh, somewhere off the Solwalk Road, then that might be ruled out uh, if, if this piece of land is developed for housing. I think that's the point he's making, which, OK, as you, but as you say, that's a sort of a, you know, a what if you know, for the future. Uh, but, I, but Emma, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, that, I think that's what Councillor Morris was, was getting at in his comments. Is that correct? I think you're right, Councillor Wilkinson. Um, the, I mean, the fact of the matter is we need to determine the, the application in relation to the current relevant policies. It's a parcel of land that's within the development boundary. It's not allocated for any other specific uses. So mm -hmm. residential development's mm -hmm. accessible in principle. Uh, with that clarification, Mr Chairman, then, then I'm happy to second uh, what is before Thank us. You. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Adams. Uh, uh, Councillor Tony Rowley. Yeah, Councillor Adams has beat me to it. It's obviously okay. subject to a section 106, this one, but um, I'm happy to, uh, uh, I was happy to second it, but Rob's yeah. already done that. What well, one uh, issue I wondered, and whether <laughs> the rest of the committee would support me on this, is that um, uh, there is an informative note going to this, and I just wonder whether we could include within there uh, that the uh, committee uh, suggests uh, that, that um, and I'm using Councillor Morris's uh, uh, wording here, that consideration that veterans are prioritised, allocated for the site, that that goes in, as an informative note. Um, I think the agent... Uh, Mr. Wall did indicate that he, he, he may go yeah. back in respect of that. It's just reinforcing yeah. it that, that we yeah. include that as an informative note. Thank, yeah. thank you, Jim. Okay, I, th I think we should do, we should do that. Any, any further speakers before we move to a vote? Uh, Mrs. Steele, sorry, yes, you, you're indicating. Yes, please. Uh, my, it's also a question of clarification. I think we heard uh, quite early on in the discussion that um, the, the, it was said that there were people wanting to downsize in Droitwich. That being the case, am I right in th thinking that this proposal is for, shall I say, flats? Three-storey flats? Is that what people will want if they're selling a house in Droitwich? Please, can somebody... Tell me I'm wrong. Uh, Emma, could you could you respond to Mrs. Steele's point there? 
Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, the proposal is for 22 one and two bedroom units. Um, the details are obviously reserved for future consideration, but the indicative layout does suggest that it would be three and four storey apartments. Um, whether or not that's what the people of Toitwich want to downsize into, I don't know. But in terms of size, they would certainly presumably meet some meet the need for, for downsizers. Okay, thank you. Um, I, oh, Councillor Cohen, you want to speak thank before you? Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I'm a little concerned about the, um, the, the, the odours from the fuel depot next door, as is uh, Councillor Morris. Is there anything that we could attach as an informative note to cover that issue um, beyond, you know, the the condition that the WRS have asked for? I don't know. We'll ask uh, Emma. Can that be added to our to our informative note? I I, I should think we could add it as a note, but I'm pretty sure covered by the condition, and of course the design and layout. Of You've broken up. I Sorry. Can't. Yeah, Emma, Emma, I think some of us missed some of your words there. We were breaking up a bit. Oh, right. Sorry. Um, I, was, I was just going to say that um, the, the issue is probably covered by the condition suggested by WRS. But of course, the, um, the layout and the design of the scheme are actually reserved matters. So they will be informed by the site constraint. The scheme would okay. be, as I mentioned yeah. earlier, to mitigate any adverse impacts. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Miller, do you want, you want to speak before we move to a vote? Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, I remember talking to the British Legion about this when I was Chairman for Witchhaven District Council, and that's quite some years ago and uh, what is coming forward. I think um, when we talk about three and we go four story houses, and of course, this, once it is given outline, will go uh, for sale to a developer. So it probably won't be the last plan we see here anyway, uh, once we get some changes from uh, a future developer. Um, but it was talk talked about the uh, British Legion and the donations given and the financial support they need. And I'm just surprised that um, they're not, um, and I hope that they uh, look at if they're going to sell it to a developer, they're going to partnership so they can maximize their, um, it's not a planning consideration at all, just a, um, a, a thought before we go to the vote and uh, hope they take it on board that they look at maximizing their profits and not um, um, giving it all away. But four story, I wouldn't be totally in favour of four-storey at that point there because of the height of the railway line, um, the four-storey um, for the people on the top stories, it would be very noisy indeed. Um, I was going to make some comments about the tree planting, but with three and four-storey, it, it, it's just, um, it just wouldn't be worth making a comment on the um, tree planting there. So um, um, I, I, wish, I wish them luck. I will be supporting this application. And I hope we take it on board that veterans do have um, uh, access to these accommodation uh, uh, when they're finally developed. Um, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, okay, thank you, Councillor Miller. Okay, I think we'll move to a vote now. Um, so John is proposed and seconded for approval uh, with, a, with an informative note. Uh, John, can I ask you to take a vote on it, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, same as before, please, Councillors. Councillor Adams. Oh. Councillor Bowden? Four. Councillor Cohen? Four. Councillor Darby? Four. Councillor Dyke? Four. Councillor Eyre? Four. Councillor Haverman Mart? Four. Councillor Miller? Four. Councillor Mrs. Rowley? I'm staying. Councillor Tony Rowley? Four. Councillor Sinton. Councillor Sinton. Sorry, four. Councillor Smith. Four. Councillor Steele. Against. Councillor Ward. Four. 
I'm Chair Councillor Wilkinson. Oh. Chair, by my count, that's 13 votes for, one against and one abstention. So the motion's been carried. Okay, thank you very much. Now, um, I'm just going to ask the committee's opinion now. It's, it's about 12 minutes to one, so we ought to consider a break. But on the other hand, our next item on the agenda, number 12, I think, I think is a fairly non-controversial one with no speakers, and it's only in front of us because the applicant is a councillor. So it may be we can actually um, deal with item 12 fairly rapidly, um, and then we'll call an adjournment for, for lunch. Is that, uh, is that acceptable to everybody? Okay. Agree. Uh, yeah, good. In which case, um, uh, Nicola, can we uh, can we deal with item twelve, please? Yes, of course, Jim. I'll, um, I'll just get that presentation up and running for you. Hopefully you can all see that, okay. So we have an application for a change of use to motor vehicle workshop and MOT testing centre with associated offices and parking areas. Members, you're in receipt of a written update which includes comments from Worcestershire regulatory services. So here we can see the application site edged in red and it for, comprises the former mission recycling located on the Offenham Road. The site contains a two-storey building with parking area and is accessed from Offenham Road to the east. The site's currently vacant and was last in B2 use. Here we have an aerial photograph noting the site, sighting of the host building in the northwestern part of the site and the location of the access and parking area and the predominantly rural character of the adjoining land. It's proposed to change the use of the site, of the site to a motor vehicle workshop and MOT testing centre, which is sui generis in terms of use class. This slide shows the elevations and floor plans of the proposed testing centre. We can see that the MOT testing bay will be sited within the main part of the building with customer parking to the front. No change to the site layout or external elevations to the building are proposed. We have a few site photographs for you. Here we have the view of the site from the Offenham Road, picking up on the customer parking area to the front of the building, which will house the MOT testing centre. Again, here we have the eastern elevation of the building. As I said, no external alterations are proposed. Vehicles will enter the building through the roller shutter door that we can see in the image there. Here we have some photographs of the north elevation of the building. Again, no, no alterations proposed here. And an image of the southern elevation of the building. Again, no alterations are proposed. And we can see that the previous recycling operation on the site has now ceased. The recommendation is one of approval. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you. I'm just confirming that Councillor Googe is not present, um, which is as, as per expected. Okay, um, does anybody wish to speak on this application? Or, um, Councillor Miller? Yes, Chairman, reading over this application, I'm quite pleased with it, but I would like to see some um, EV charge points um, uh, for the vehicles waiting for uh, any work to be done for the opportunity to um, recharge, uh, which is the future. And uh, so I'd like to see that part of the application. Other than that, I would like to um, put this forward for approval, Chairman. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, Nicola, can we deal with the question of char EV charging? I don't believe that's something that we can seek on, on this change of use application, applica um, application, no chairman. Okay, thank you. Councillor Tony Rowley. Could I just seek clarification from Nicola? Does the um, change of use cover the entire site? In other words, we're not going to have twin uses here. It's just the entire site is going to be change of use to uh, MOT and servicing, etc. So the recycling has gone completely and the, the use for recycling has gone. Can I just have clarification on that point? Yeah, absolutely. So, the, so the, the change of use covers everything within the red line. So that includes the whole site, the building and the car parking area to the front. The, the previous B2 use um, would no longer 
um, apply to, to the site. And I think, as you see within the officer report, there's a bit of detail in terms of how long the site has been vacant and when the, that, that, um, that that recycling use is no longer a valid concern. On that basis, Chairman, if Tony's already uh, moved to approve, then I'll second it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, good, so that's proposed and seconded. Um, sorry, uh, David, David Hammond is indicating. David, you wanted to? Uh, yes, Chairman, it's just, it's just the fact that Councillor Miller, in his moving approval, moved it for approval with the EV charging condition. Nicola has indicated that uh, you can't do that on this application, and therefore that, that moving of that proposal uh, can't stand. And you would actually need somebody else to move a second motion. Am I right, John? Dave, that'd be the safest way of doing it. Yes. Yeah. So, Councillor Miller, if you're if you're happy to, to to move the proposal without the reference to EV charging points, and and, and Councillor Rowley, perhaps if you're happy to second it on that basis, we can we can proceed. Uh, I'm happy with that, but I would like to have um, uh, um, not not a part of the planning approval. Uh -oh but a suggestion to the applicant that we would have preferred to see EV charging points installed, which they can do with, with government grants at the moment. So um, uh, take the opportunity. Um, and, and, and that I would hope would be an advisory, even though we cannot um, make it an official part of this application. I, I'm, I'm not happy to second that, um, Chairman, because uh, it, it's a MOT servicing place. What, why would they need to have separate EV points? And if we can't um, uh, enforce that, then 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 I, I'm I couldn't agree to an advisory note. Okay. Um, okay. Let, let's let, let, let's let's deal with it in in. Two parts, then, because an advisory note is not strictly a condition. So, I think, in terms of the actual motion, I think it, Councillor Miller has proposed approval, full stop. And you, you, I think, uh, Councillor Oli, have seconded approval, full stop. Yeah. So, I think that's what's actually on the table. The question of whether um, an advisory note goes is, I don't think that's strictly speaking part of the approval, but John, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think as, as we sit here, we've got a perfectly acceptable proposal for approval, full stop, seconded uh, for approval, full stop, which we can vote on. Is, is that's that, how is I'm okay? in, for you, Chair, and thank you. And um, that's how I am interpreting it. And of course, um, perhaps a suggestion can be made outside of the planning regime that it would be a good um, good idea to have EV charging points, but in terms of the decision, um, I think that we've got that. We've got a motion now that we need to decide on, and we can we can move on. Okay. Everybody happy with that? In which case, we'll move to the vote, please, uh, John. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillors. Um, Councillor Adams? Four. Councillor Bowden? Four. Councillor Cohen? Four. Councillor Darby? Four. Councillor Dyke? Councillor Eyre? Councillor Eyre? Four. Councillor Haverman Mart? Four. Councillor Miller? Four. Is this any use to you? Councillor Mrs. Rowley? Four. Uh, oh. Councillor Tony Rowley? Four. Councillor Sinton? Four. Uh, Councillor Smith? Four. Councillor Steele? Four. Councillor Ward? Four. And Chair Councillor Wilkinson? Four. That's unanimous, Chair. Motion's been carried. Okay, good. Right, thank you very much, everybody. Um, I'm now, it's now coming up to one o'clock. I'm going to suggest um, that the meeting now be adjourned until two o'clock, um, if members are, are happy with that. Yeah? Chairman, do we need to um, leave the meeting and then come back? No, it, well, it's the same meeting. Um, it's, it's not. It's not a separate meeting. So it is. It is technically an adjournment. Um, in the past, when we've had short adjournments, we've suggested that everybody actually leaves their um, you know, their screen connected, so that we know that we don't, we don't have a problem with people connecting again. But I, um, 
Is that what you what you mean, Johnny? Or, yeah, I was uh, wondering with it being uh, one hour, whether we leave and then come back. Um, I don't know, Mandy. Do you have a view on that? Yeah. Well, no, I, I wouldn't suggest that you leave and come back just in case we I can't get you back again. Okay. <laughs> I'm, go I'm going to put the Zoom meeting on um, pause. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So back at two o'clock, please, everybody. Thank you.
Yeah. You okay there, Mandy? Gosh, I thought I'd lost it. <laughs> have, you got, have you got much sound? Yes, okay, I think. I know. I'm just about to start like a second party like this. That's that right, it starts at two, and I'm on, I'm on mute and video. Two hours, two and a half hours. Dave, you're not on mute.
David. Yes, I David. A, Hi. I had a phone call from Rod, Rob Adams during lunch. He just wanted to remind yeah. you that he won't be attending for the next two items, as he de declared a precautionary interest. Oh, right. Pecuniary interest. That was f from from Rob. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just, thanks for that reminder, uh, he just, David. Yeah. He just didn't want you to hold up the meeting, waiting for him. We're waiting for him now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, Mark, Mark Ward, you, you there? Yeah, yeah, Mark. Yes, uh, David. Yeah, Mark, well, just while we're waiting for this next, waiting to start again, and we're, we're uh, oh, we are on YouTube, actually. Oh, no, yeah, we no, are. I was, I was, I thought, um, Mandy, have we, have we started uh, recording and broadcasting yet? Yeah. Yeah. No, anyway, it doesn't matter. All, all I was going to ask you, Mark, did you get an email, a strange email this morning from somebody called Buy and Sales uh, talking about these items 13 and 14? Yes, I did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. I mean, I, I just wondered who, who it had gone to and who, <laughs> who it was from. <laughs> you know. I got it as well, David, but yeah. we are on you, by the way. Nice. And I got it as well. I got yeah, it. Too. I, did. I got it too. I yeah. suspect uh, all planning officers got it. Then yeah. members got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can't take account of it, but I, yeah. I just wondered where, you know, who, where it had gone to and uh, who, or who it was from for that matter. But anyway, not, not to worry. Yeah.
How are we doing, Mandy? I think we've got all the officers um, and I think most of the participants. Uh, yeah. John, can you confirm that we're core eight and we're ready to, we're, we're allowed to start again? Yeah, we are core at chair. Some councillors have not enabled their video feeds though, so um, yeah. if we could continue. Yeah, but we've, we've got all the officers. I can see all the officers. I can see Nicola, I can see Emma, I can see David, I can see Andrew, and I can see... No, I can't see Howard Davis yet. Yeah, Howard, Howard. Yes, I can. You sorry? Yeah, no, I can. Yeah, you're up there, you're in the corner. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So we've got all the officers. Great, we're, yeah. We're caught, yeah. Um, we've got all the officers back. We are core eight, and it is two o'clock. So I suggest we um, we'll, we'll start. So I will um, un, I will un, un adjourn the meeting, um, and we got as far as item thirteen. Um, which is Wheatlands Farm, Walcott Lane, Drake's Broughton. And we have two speakers on this. Uh, we have Richard, Mr. Richard Booker and Mr. Durant Jones. So we'll just wait for them to appear. Chair, right. Chairman, Richard. I'm not sure about Gerard Jones or whether it's Karen Lewing is, who is speaking. Okay, um, I, I think it's going to be Karen Lewing, uh, but we, we shall see in a moment. Um, but I can see Mr. Richard Booker. Yes, can you, Mr. Booker, can you see us and hear us? I certainly can, thank you. Okay, good. Uh, and um, Karen Lewing, are you there? Well, if she's there, uh, she's not speaking to us. John, how long do we give the speakers to appear? Um, there's no set rule, um, Chair, but perhaps if we could, if we have two speakers and one's present, perhaps we could proceed with the first speaker and, and, and obviously, as fingers crossed, Karen makes an appearance. It's possible, Chair, that she's muted because her, her microphone is showing is muted, even though she has a photograph there. Yeah, that's that's the point. Mandy, is there anything you can do to unmute uh, Karen Lewing? I've pressed the ask to unmute, but I'll put a chat on as well. Well, I still can't see Karen, so I think we're going to have to, um, as, as John T. Sells advises, I think we'll just, um, we'll just carry on. 
Um, do you, do you so, want to carry on and I'll go and see if I can ring her? Uh, yes, I, I think we'd I think we'd better do that, otherwise we could be sit, sitting here for rather a long time, couldn't we? Um, so, Mr. Booker, um, well, welcome to planning committee. I don't know if you were watching the proceedings earlier today to see how it how it works. Um, if, if not, uh, I'll briefly explain what will happen: is the, the planning officer will present the case. Um, the, the speakers each have three minutes to make their point. They may be asked some questions. They'll then be asked to withdraw while the um, while the committee debate the item. So, are you okay with I, that? I have been watching. Okay, good. Um, so, Emma, I think you're presenting this one. I am, yes. Thank you, Chairman. Okay. So, this is one of two applications on the agenda today at Wheatlands Farm in Drake's Broughton. You can see from the location plan here, this is the proposed agricultural building and there's the, the edge of the village there, Drake's Broughton. The application seeks planning permission for an agricultural building for the housing of um, cows at an existing dairy farm, which you can see on the aerial photograph here. So the building would be located just in that area there. The block plan shows the building is well related to the existing buildings on the site. And you can see from the elevations, it's a typical design of, of this type of livestock building. Access to the site is via the existing vehicular access from Walcott Lane to the north, which you can see on the, the photographs there. And we've got some photographs of the existing buildings on the site. And there should be some cows there as well. There we are. Um, members will see from the report that the building's actually required to reduce cow density at the farm due to requirements relating to animal welfare and the proposals designed to ensure there's adequate airflow between the units and, and to the cows. Therefore, there's no direct increase in the number of, of cows at the, at the site as a result of the proposal. There's no objection on highway grounds, landscape or amenity grounds and with subject to the additional condition that's set out in the written updates, um, to secure a construction management plan, the officer's recommendation is one of approval. That's all from me, Chairman. Okay, thank you very much, Emma. Okay, Mr. Booker, you have three minutes. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for this opportunity to speak. Uh, my primary objection to this planning application is loss of immunity in that this development will additionally affect my amenities by noise, disturbance and smell, and not necessarily in any order. However, before I explore these further, can I refer to the Planning Committee Report 210076-4? On page two, it refers to another application, 21001834. My, why are these two applications, why are there two applications? Why is there not just one? Why does the application applicant seek to split out the development designs into more than one application. Growth by stealth, a practice is seemingly repeated. Perhaps it is a lack of my understanding of planning processes, which is at fault. The application, the applicant has made 18 planning applications since 1993, the same time as my family moved to Drake's Broughton. At that time, you would have seen the dairy herd out on the pastures. Now they're housed in sheds do not see the light of day, and the herd has grown exponentially. We do not know how many head this herd is, but the scale is one of an industrial size and not of a dairy herd that we would have all remembered from our childhood. I am curious as to why we do not know, and it's not on this application, what is the number of this herd and why is this not included? Because we are moving or have moved already from a dairy farm to an industrial farm in practice. Industrial farming is not a pleasant business. And as this farm moves from what it was to where it is today, its impact on the surrounding area is growing and not pleasantly. Notwithstanding the noise, which starts early and continues late, in the summer, very late, it is the smell that emits from the site that interferes in my life, albeit it is not 724-36 high, but remains significant nevertheless. This smell is not one of a dairy farm, but one of an industrial unit, so much so, 
that one has to remain indoors with all the windows closed. This can and does go on for days, impacting on my family's quality of life. It ruined much of last summer, a meanest is that many take for granted, i.e. their garden. We could not enjoy ours, and I fully expect that this will continue and will probably get much worse. WRS make light of the fact that nobody has complained, and if they did, they would ensure best practices being carried out of the facility. The applicant will state that best practice is being carried out, so WRS could do little. The facility, due to its expansion, is now too big for its location, which is now unsuitable for its current farming practices. Before I finish, can I observe that the planning permission given in 2017 had certain conditions regarding landscaping, as proposed by then the landscape officer, Mrs E Marshall. To date, four years hence, none of that work has been carried out. Is it not prudent upon the planning committees to ensure that previous approved applications are carried out and completed before approving any more? You would have already seen my submission that you would have been part of your pack for this application. Thank you. I can't hear you. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Booker. Um, Mandy, do we have any success for getting uh, hold of Karen? Karen, um, Karen? No, I'm not sure that um, if Karen was speaking on his behalf, only he has sent me an email saying, unfortunately, he wasn't able to attend as a colleague um, had to go and have a COVID test. I mean, he's, he has emailed me a statement to read, but um, I know that we don't read um, written no, statements out any that. longer. So I'll have no. to email him back later. Yeah. Okay, so thank you. Um, okay, so uh, Councillor Ward, uh, Mark, Mark Ward, this, this is uh, your, uh, you're the local councillor. Do you have any questions to put to Mr Booker? Uh, no, I don't. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Mr Booker, thank you very much. Um, we'll ask you to withdraw at that point. Uh, we'll then open for debate. So, Councillor Ward, do you want to go first? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Yes, uh, I brought this application to committee because of the size and the potential impact on the uh, neighbouring residents. My comments will relate to both this application and the next application, as they are identical in as much as they're both have the same footprint of uh, shed next to each other. Uh, so they are dealt with as two separate ap applications, but they are ostensibly the same application twice over. I do relate uh, reference to SWDP 25 and landscape character. And that states really that development proposals must demonstrate amongst others, that they conserve and enhance the environment. And this doesn't, and there's no provision for any landscaping. If you look at the plan, the new buildings are on the western side of the uh, farm, facing effectively Drake's Broughton. And there's no provision of screening on any aspect of that side, which is unfortunate and would be beneficial. SWDP 27 relates to renewable and low carbon energy. And a note from the officer's presentation that is not required because of the nature of the building being open-sided. However, there is a lot of roof space there. Uh, the area of both these applications extend to in excess of 1,000 square meters. So potential solar panel usage there to reduce farm energy requirements would be beneficial. That's not been incorporated. I would like to see what the herd size is. Current herd sizes for dairy cattle in the UK stands at, as of 2019, 151 on average. And in the, uh, as in England, in the UK as a whole, 148. We don't know what the size of this herd is, and it would be really helpful to know uh, so that we can actually assess whether these additional requirements are to reduce density and by how much and not to allow any expansion of the current herd. But not knowing that size may, makes that very difficult. Also, SWDP 29 and drainage 
I'm not sure that a stud's appraisal has been done robustly on this additional storage of uh, housing for cows because there's a potential being open-sided that there's a risk of groundwater contamination. I'm not sure whether a water man a waste management uh, scheme has been actually addressed or, or seen. SWP 31 relates to pollution and land uh, stability. And this is probably quite crucial to herd size because the proposals must be designed in order to avoid any significant adverse impact from pollution. And that is also cumulative pollution. So the addition of additional buildings, we don't know the herd size, so we're not quite sure what the additional cumulative risk is, but that also includes things like noise and smell, all of which will have a detrimental on the local environment and local, local uh, residents. And this is a concern, especially if you don't know the herd size. So I am concerned that with lack of detail in terms of size, water management, and uh, social aspects, we need more details. And I can't ask the uh, applicant because no one's here. Thank you. Okay, th thank you very much, Councillor. Before we go any further, um, Emma, uh, I think, Councillor Ward has raised some important questions there, but can we just dwell on the question of herd size? Is that a material planning matter, or is or are we solely concerned with the buildings per se? Uh, and the question of how many cows go in there is a matter for you know is not a planning issue. Or I don't know. Could could you advise on that, Emma? Well, as far as this application is concerned, it isn't going to, to increase the number of cows that are on the site at the minute. Um, the size of the herd does fluctuate a little bit from time to time, um, just due to um, new cows coming in and older ones leaving. Um, but it, it's it's very much sort of a stagnant thing and it's it's not something that's really relevant to the, the consideration of this, this application. Um, with regards to visual impact and landscape character, this building is actually subservient in scale to the existing buildings. And of course, it'll be seen in any long distance views against the backdrop of any of the existing buildings. It's actually sited between two buildings. So it's, it, I think it would be difficult to argue that it would be visually prominent um, was what I wanted to say on that point. Um, with regards to SWDP 27 and energy consumption, because the building doesn't, doesn't need electricity to run, it's an, it's an open-sided building, there's no requirement to, for 10% of the predicted energy requirements to be provided through um, the use of renew renewables or low carbon generating um, energy facilities because the, the energy consumption is, is so de minimis. So I, I hope that's helped on that point. Okay, so thank you. And I think, um, Andrew, there was a point on drainage. Do you want to respond on that? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not really an expert on farmyard drainage, to be honest. Um, so we've just been looking at the, the building itself and the details that have been submitted suggest that uh, all the surface water currently remains within the site on discharge through whatever existing systems are currently in place. And um, from that point of view, we have no issue with that. Um, the only thing that I would say, though, is there may well be a slightly different issue with regards to contamination from whatever waste the cows produce and how that's dealt with will be a separate issue altogether, not necessarily through surface water disposal. Okay, thank you, Andrew. And I think, uh, Emma, if I can just come back to you, I think the uh, the other point we need to consider that's been raised, it was raised by, uh, the, by Mr. Booker, um, was the fact that regardless of whether the new buildings will require landscaping for the reasons that you explained, there was the suggestion that the previous, the landscaping required by a previous application has not been provided. Is that of any of relevance? Um, thank you, Chairman. Not relevant to this planning application, no. We can certainly look into that as a separate matter, but it's it's not something that, that should influence your decision today. 
Okay, thank you, Emma. Okay, Councillor Ward, let's come back to you now. You've heard what officers have said in response to the, the points you make. I don't know how, which way which way you want to take this. Take this. I'd like just to clarify the herd size with Emma. I note what the applicant says, but without any reference point, it's impossible to know whether that is going to carry on. And I'd like to condition that, but yeah, you can condition that net non-increase in herd size if we know what it is in the first place. And DEFRA must be aware, A, because of TB testing, B, because it's a legal requirement to know how many cows you have on your farm. So the actual detail is available. And to say there'll be no net increase, we don't know what the starting point is. So if they increase by zero, minus 10, plus 10, or whatever it might be, there's no reference point to say that these additional buildings will be not used to house additional cattle and hopefully be used to reduce the density of the current stock. But we don't know what that current stock level is. And that is a, a challenge to know that we're not ad creating additional housing for additional cattle. That's my concern with not knowing the yeah, details yeah. of what we, where, what we stand from, start from. Hmm. I, I understand that. Emma, do you want to further comment? Yes, I mean, as, as I set out previously, um, the numbers do fluctuate. Um, the report sets out that um, due to TB testing, for example, the farm's unable to sell any livestock at the minute. So the numbers are slightly higher. So it's not a, a, a thing that's fixed in stone. It does vary, very slightly. Um, again, it's it's not really relevant to this application. We have to assess, assess the application based on the information that's before us now. And we are being told that the, um, the proposals required, as you say, to reduce herd density and it won't affect the existing numbers. If, if there is a current issue with how the farm operates, that would be covered by different legislation and WRS could investigate the matter um, if, if it was something that was considered to be a statutory nuisance, as they would do in the future if, if things changed and, and the, the operations there did become a nuisance. So that, that's really something that's covered by, by separate legislation. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, now, as, do, do, do I, yes, right, Councillor Darby, you've got your hand up, followed by Councillor Tony Rowley. Uh, yes, my, my, I, I just got a question for Emma. I can't quite reconcile the plan drawing uh, with the aerial photograph. Uh, there seems to be uh, a building in the drawing uh, to the uh, west of the proposed building, uh, which would shield it from Drake's Broughton. But when you look at the aerial photograph, uh, it doesn't show such a building. So. I can only suppose that that building was erected after the aerial photograph was taken and is a result of the earlier planning application in 2017, I think. Uh, Emma, can you help us with that? Thank you, Chairman. You're absolutely right, Agent Councillor Darby. I should have explained that when, when we looked at the aerial photograph. It is slightly out of date. So there is now another new building that's been constructed um, to the west of that. So yes, the, the two buildings that we're considering today are actually between the existing two buildings that are on the site. So yes, it, it's a, a valid point, useful to clarify that, thank you. So they will be completely shielded, the new buildings will be completely shielded from Drake's Broughton by that building. Okay, thank you. Well, Councillor Rowley, Tony Rowley. Yes, Adrian's, uh, asked one of the questions I, I'd got, because I'd assume this was uh, almost like infill building between two buildings, and, and I think that's been confirmed as correct. It's unfortunate that the agent isn't here, because the other question that I had, oh, and by the way, Karen Lewing is our active travel officer uh, that was in, the, in, in waiting, so nothing to do with the agent. Uh, but the um, question I was going to ask is, I still can't get my head around why there are two applications um, for, for a building which would sit side by side and become almost one building. I, I can't see the rationale behind that. And I would have liked the opportunity of asking the agent 
that why what, what, why is that done and it probably doesn't you know we can only determine what's in front of us and I accept that but it, it was just getting my head around that point so I still can't fully understand why we've got two separate applications to in, in essence what would be one building one continuous uh, infill yeah. building I don't know whether um, Emma knows anything about that uh, and wants to answer that and then uh, if you could come back to me chairman I'd be grateful yeah, yeah. I, I, my understanding is that it was possibly done for commercial reasons, you know, to do with funding, you know, different funding streams. Um, that, but that's only a hypothesis. Uh, Emma, do you know anything firmer than that? I, I don't know why it's come forward as two separate applications. You know. Obviously, mm -hmm. that's the choice of the, the applicant, and it's, it, it didn't really affect too much how we determine it, because we, at least they've come in at the same time, and we can consider the... the um, the combined impact but yes I, I don't know why why they well yeah, yeah th th thank you for that that attempt uh, it still doesn't make sense I have to say I do find it very strange but yeah. in saying all yeah. that um, we are and, and as councillor Adrian Darb has established this is an infill which uh, has no visual impact on on the overall settlement at Drake's Broughton I think the question of number of, of, of cattle is not really a plan, planning issue. That's for other agencies, such as DEFRA and uh, WRS, to, to, to resolve. What we have before us is, is, is applications for um, uh, a small extension to ex existing, well, relatively small extension to existing buildings, typical uh, agricultural type open shed building for uh, livestock. Uh, 